It is a new day. It is a new era. Welcome in, everybody, to the live coverage of the press conference about to happen here at the Intermountain Health Performance Center. Eric Allen, Amber Theo Harris, and uh, in just a few moments, we will yeah. hear Antonio Pierce and Tom Telesco announced as officially the head coach and the GM of the Las Vegas Raiders. And you can just feel the excitement in the building, yes. EA. And, and again, when you come in and fly into the airport, everyone's excited. Everyone, <laughs> Everyone. understands and knows this is a, such a, a big day for Raider Nation, and uh, it was earned. It definitely was earned. So excited for Antonio Pierce and Tom Telesco uh, being a part of this great organization and just uh, really ready to go and work. Like Max Crosby said, time to work. Yeah, time to work. And, and I feel like the players have expressed to us and they've expressed uh, in the media that they feel like they kind of had unfinished business. They feel like they yeah. were just ramping up and they ran out of time by week 18 and keeping Antonio Pierce and naming him the official head coach gives them an opportunity to continue what they feel like they started. It's almost like these players are ready to get to work right here in the offseason. Yeah, yeah, like, let's right get now. going. Let's go. And you know that feeling. Yes, and that happens. When you have a really positive offseason, mm -hmm. that generally creates a great season. And I think right now when you're looking at all the players buying in, being back into the building, the development, which we're going to talk about, was really – critical in how they were able to have success during the end of the season. Didn't win every game, but for the most part, they were dialed in. Mm -hmm. Practicing, the competition, all those things, when you think about being a player, if you have a head coach who really presents the fundamentals as, hey, we're going to compete, the best players are going to get an opportunity to play, everyone's going to be valued here, valued here, and just continue to have that kind of Raider mentality, us against the world, really work for us, Raider Nation. Well, Antonio Pierce is not only going to talk to the press, he's going to join us here on set yep. in our podcast studio. We're also going to talk to James Jones, Daniel Jeremiah from NFL Media, and of course, Lincoln Kennedy and Jason Horowitz will be joining to sh this show to get their thoughts on Antonio Pierce and Tom Telesco. But um, I'll tell you, these players lobbied for Antonio yes. Pierce, and he changed the culture, and we watched it in a nine-week span. You and I have been, you've played the game for a long time. <laughs> We've been brought Broadcasters for a long time. I've never seen a culture shift happen like that before. And obviously, Mark Davis saw that, believed in what Antonio Pierce was doing. He's a clear leader of men. Yeah, you're right about that. When you're talking about culture and you're talking about uh, fit, dynamics, all those things, you can see it when you lose it. Mm -hmm. I've been a part of teams that have lost it. Uh, Going back to the Buddy Ryan days when Buddy left the building, it was just kind of a void. Mm -hmm. And it's very difficult to fill that void. And it was the same thing here. And it, it would have been very difficult to come in with a new head coach, no matter who it was, to kind of fill those shoes that AP was able to fill late in the season through his locker room, the vibe, the way the players really bought in. That's difficult because it's authentic. And it was AP. And no one is going to be able to come in and be him. Could have been different, obviously, but I'm not sure if it had the same success. The development of those young players right away, uh, I mean, just giving those uh, assistant coaches the authority to be able to go in and coach and find ways, different ways to be able to teach these guys, some of them younger, some of them older, they all were able to benefit by the end by being very, very good players. Yeah, and you heard players say things like, I, I was playing for AP, I didn't yeah. want to let him down. You don't hear that from grown men in the NFL, <laughs> maybe right. college. And that really showed yeah. the impact that he had. And here's the impact that he had on paper. He had a 5-4 and four record. He led the Raiders to a franchise record 63 points. That's incredible. Against the Chargers. That was insane. Um, and the biggest one probably was that Christmas Day defeat of the Chiefs for the first time since 2020. It was a six-game skid was big. That was against big. the Chiefs, and and I believe that was the day that he really won the job. But you got to win your division. You know yes. this. You have to yeah. be uh, competitive in the division in order to go on in the playoffs. And they went three and one, three and one. They beat every team in the division once under Antonio AFC Pierce. West. A AFC West. AFC West. But but the stat that's not on there that that I'm excited about was the penalties. How they can were you a play? Discipline team. Like, if at the end of the year, when we're talking about vibes, we're talking about culture, we're talking about a team, this football team was a physical football team. Yep. They're going to put their hands on you. They're going to put their pads on you, led by Max Crosby. But they were the least penalized team after he took over. Big. 
They I were mean, disciplined. That, yes. And the defense turned around. Oh. 16 points a game. That's awesome. 16, if you only give up 16 points when, a game, good things are hey, ahead. You're balling. You know in, that. In our division with all these terrific quarterbacks, but to be able to play a physical brand of football and have less penalties – just shows you a lot about listening in, buying in, being physical, but understanding where you need to be as far as hands, feet, leverage. Man, I'm telling you, he's done an incredible job with this defense. And it's not just the defense. Uh, hear what his old teammate that he won a Super Bowl with, Sean O'Hara, uh -huh. told us about him knowing both sides of the ball. I got a chance to experience him in practice, and I got to see what a cerebral player he was and how good he was with his instincts as a player, just he always knew wh whether we came out in a certain formation, he knew what the play was going to be. He could call it out as we were walking to the line. And I kind of have to like play coy and he'd be yelling out, it's toss crack, here it comes, here it comes. And I'm like, no, 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 it's going the other way. So he was always watching film. Uh, his locker was next to mine on game day. So uh, he, you know, he would have his portable DVD player up watching film right until the last second that we went out on the field. So um, he, he was always ahead of the curve. Uh, from a, a mental side and the game, the game, the schemes and the offenses, he always took a lot of pride in knowing exactly what the other offenses were going to do. Um, and it served him well as a player and it certainly has served him well as a coach. And that deep knowledge, we already saw him transform the defense, and now the next step will be to hire an offensive coordinator and what will happen with the offense. But Antonio Pierce being a cerebral coach is one thing. Um, we talk so much about his emotion and his ability to move the men, but yeah. his understanding of the game and his ability to get men to play the game the right way, we talked about the discipline, that's what was really impressive. Yeah, that's the biggest compliment a player can provide for you, like, you know, offensive guy or if you're on the other side of the ball, is he understood what was going on. He's a situational player. When you step on the football field, after year three or four, those physical abilities to dominate uh, the game kind of go by the wayside. So you have to find another way. You have to adapt. And that's the one thing that he's been able to do. He's been able to adapt as a player and as a coach. And when you're giving these players opportunities to, to make big plays, it's because they understand what's going on on the football field. They know what they're supposed to do, but more importantly, they know what the opposing team is trying to do, trying to accomplish, and we saw that. We saw the evidence of that with the turnovers. We saw the evidence of that with the confidence in the back end, the linebackers pointing out certain plays throughout the uh, last eight weeks of the season. That's a testament to a man who understands how to be successful on the football field, more importantly for a coach, how to – translate that into players yes. how to being connect. able to understand. Yeah, how to connect. And I think he had a definite level of respect from those players because of what he did do on the field yeah. and also how yeah. he treated them. But another big announcement is we are just moments away from hearing from Antonio Pierce. Also, GM Tom Telesco, that will be announced as well. Spent 11 seasons uh, with the Chargers, so he will be the new GM. And look, I really like this hire because I think pairing 29 years of NFL experience with a new head coach is the right move um, to bring him in. And man, is he a personnel guy. Yeah. Man, is he hit in the draft with the Chargers. Just to even go back to the Colts, when he first started, they took Peyton Manning his first year yeah. with the Colts. He was just a junior scout. Edger and James with Colts. Reggie Wayne, who might go into the Hall of Fame with you. Yeah. <laughs> Red. Right here, Aaron yeah. Allen. Yeah. Um, and then with the just recently in his 11 years with the Chargers, he had six first rounders that went on to be pro bowlers. I mean, Big he time. drafted guys like Joey Bosa, Derwin James. Look, Raiders, you all know these people. <laughs> we know them. You yeah. know them. <laughs> Justin Herbert, Rashawn Slater. I mean, uh, what a what yeah. a record of drafting. I'm excited for the draft. Yes, this year. I, I am. Big respect for for Tom, and he kind of. You know, his mentor, Bill Polian, was the guy who also built the Buffalo Bills of our times. Those late 90s teams went to Super Bowls. Tremendous players on that football team. Thurman Thomas, Kelly, uh, uh, Andre Reed, oh, yeah. Bruce Smith, so many great players. So, again, he is 
done an outstanding job, and he's the kind of guy who's going to fit perfectly with this organization. All right, we're going to continue our coverage here at the Under Mountain Health Performance Center. Um, we are going to hear from Antonio Pierce. He's yes. coming up in a few seconds here. Also, Tom Telesco after the press conference. Join us back here. We're going to get reaction from James Jones, from Daniel Jeremiah, some our guy. Yeah, yeah he's he's going to join us uh, via satellite. Uh, Lincoln Kennedy and Jason Horowitz as well. Uh, we're going to throw you down to that in just a moment. As soon as they are taking the stage, they should be taking it any moment down there. But just walking in the building today, it just felt different. Everything yeah. felt light. Everybody was excited. And you really get the sense that there is a buy-in, whether it is the person who was stocking the shelves yeah. in the cafeteria all the way up to the players. People are I haven't heard anybody go, Antonio Pierce, that's the wrong choice. <laughs> right, right. People have bought in. And yeah. that unity and togetherness is what leads to winning. Yeah, yeah. I, I spend a lot of time, we both do, in the building and uh, in between. Uh, yeah, so let's go. All right, let's uh, throw it down. Uh, and so uh, they're about to introduce it's a great Antonio Pierce. Raider. Um, today I have the privilege of introducing two young men that are going to be leading this organization into the future. And uh, I'm going to start off by introducing a new friend with a brand new name. His name is Mr. Tom Telesco, the general manager of the Las Vegas Raiders. Tom can come on out. And now I'd like to introduce an old friend with a brand new name. Antonio Pierce, head coach of the Las Vegas Raiders. So I'm going to let these two gentlemen introduce themselves to you and then uh, allow you to ask some questions. I suggest that you ask all the questions you want and make the right ones because I don't think they're going to be talking to you too much after this. they got some work to do. All right. Go ahead, gentlemen. Tom, why don't you introduce yourself? Thank you. Hey, thanks, everybody, for coming, uh, media and employees. Um, so first, I just want to say, just, you know, thank you to Mark Davis. Um, this is such an iconic franchise with a storied history, and obviously it all starts with the legacy of Al Davis. So I couldn't be more excited to be here, um, but also realize like there's a tremendous responsibility with this job. So um, the fact that um, Mark and the whole leadership team is trusting me with this, um, I couldn't be, be more happy to be, be a part of this. So um, the uh, last couple of weeks, I've had a chance to you know, meet a lot of the leadership team as we went through the interview process. Um, you know, they like to thank, obviously, Mark was the, the, the leader of that, that process, but um, Sandra Morgan and uh, Larry Delson, uh, Richard Seymour, who's, who's right here, um, Kenny Harrock, who's, who's a legend in our business, and, uh, and Tom Delaney. So it was a great process. It was fun to go through. And I can kind of tell from the first interview, like, there was a connection and a fit. And I think that's really important in this league um, to feel that. And I felt that at the, the first time through. So... Um, and when I came back the second time, when Antonio was in there, I kind of felt that same thing. So um, it's so important to me and, and my family to be a part of the right fit in this league. And there's no doubt this is it. And um, again, just really thankful that they saw the same thing in me. They saw that same fit um, and that same culture fit. So, um, and another thing I'll say is, you know, I haven't been here long, um, but when you talk about the, the Raider way or the, the Raider tenants of commitment to excellence, just win, baby, once a Raider, always a Raider. I mean, I've heard of it. I know of it. I've seen it. Uh, but when you walk in this building, I mean, you can feel it. And I haven't been here long, but there is no doubt. I mean, first of all, you see it tangibly. I mean, this football facility is jaw-dropping for me. I've never seen anything like it. It's amazing. The resources are amazing here. That's a credit to, to Mark Davis and what he's put into this team. But you see that right off the bat. Um, but, you know, the second part is, and the Raiders are known for this as far as how they treat their alumni, how they treat their former players, how they treat the families. 
And it is something that other NFL teams and really all professional sports teams, they try and duplicate what they do here, but nobody does it like the Raiders. And you can feel that in this building. You can feel it from the employees. Like last night, uh, you know, six o'clock at night, uh, my wife gets a call from, from Ainsley Moore, who works in football operations, and she kind of gave my wife a rundown of what's going to go on today, what's going to go on in the future. Um, and she would just, she was so nice, so detailed, so organized. My wife gets off the phone. She's like, wow, these, you know, they, they've got it there. Like, they know how it works. And that's important. Um, you know, to win a championship is more than just, you know, the head coach and general manager. It takes everybody. Um, so to see someone like that right off the bat know, hey, look, this is how you treat people, and this is how organized and detailed we're going to be, um, it's just a great example for the whole organization. Um, and then lastly, um, you know, I'm really excited to partner with AP right here. Um, you know, you can tell in the interview, right, it was really my interview, um, but you could tell, like, he has that leadership trait that a head coach has to have. And it's really, to me, it feels more like, you know, not so much follow me, but join me, which I like in football, because um, he's right in it with, with the rest of us. Um, and I think, you know, the, your football team takes on the identity of your head coach. And that's what we're going to have here. That's what we're going to build around. Um, I'm excited to start this partnership and I uh, couldn't be more excited to, to be a Raider. So I'll leave it with that and I'll pass it over to our new head coach. I start off like I always do, at least I am. We've got a great house here. Patrick Graham, good to see you, man. Um, but we always end all our victories a certain way in the locker room. So we got a packed house here. I'm going to see how everybody's vocal cords work. <laughs> so stay with me. You ready? Raiders! <laughs> yeah, now we warmed up. See, that's what we're talking about. Antonio Pierce, uh, thank you, Tom. Uh, appreciate it. Uh, thank you, Mark Davis, Sandra, Richard, Tom, Larry, Ken, uh, the Raiders organization, um, our coaches, our players. I said at the very beginning when I had an opportunity to speak in front of everybody the first time on November 1st, I'm humbled, I'm honored, I'm excited. I'm excited. The challenge that this team took on um, from November 1st on and what they embraced and what they displayed out on the field is hats off to our organization and our coaches and our players for buying in. It wasn't easy. It was something that probably many people didn't think would happen, as you say, overnight. But when you have good people in the building, when you have the belief, you have the trust, you have the accountability, you earn respect, you do it the right way, you buy in, you understand that nobody's bigger than the shield and the patch, and that you play for a lot more than just the name on your back. There's a lot of people that we affect by wins and losses. We understand that, and we don't take it lightly. I like to thank my family here, Jocelyn, my father, Perry, my kids. My uncle in the back came all the way from Bermuda. Bermuda in the house, Piper. Yeah, Bermuda. I right, got the island people in here, too. So um, appreciate everybody being here. Where are we going forward? Tom just hit on it. It's great to partner up. I think there's going to be a partnership that we can grow for for many years. Hopefully that comes with a lot of W's and a lot of Raider chance. Our vision is clear. Win a division get into the playoffs, and host that Lombardi Trophy. That's not a promise. That's our vision. Our philosophy is simple. It's real simple. It's the right away. Pride, poise, poise, passionate. A love for the game. And just win. It starts with our DNA. Ill intent. Physicality. Toughness. Speed, attitude, full-blown Max Crosby effort. And it goes to our staff with preparation and execution and putting a plan together and executing throughout the week with a smile and a purpose to get a victory on every Sunday that we show up into Allegiant Stadium. It's not going to be easy. It's not going to be overnight. I'm not promising anything no, along with Tom. But I do know this, you're going to get the best out of myself and Tom. We're going to exhaust every possible resource 
an ounce of sweat, tears, and effort, and night, and minute, and second that we have to turn this bad boy into a consistent winning organization that it's used to and that it deserves. One thing we know, and they're in the room, is our alumni. As you guys saw in the last game, open doors. Post game as well. Raider Nation. That bad boy good. <laughs> that bad boy ready to rock. It rocked the last game. We set the tone in 2024 what it'll look like going forward. And we're going to work this offseason, in the summer, and in the fall until we get to that first home game to see Raider Nation again, loud, rowdy, making it tough for the opponent, that black hole rocking and rolling, the wind club doing his deal, Mark Davis in there clapping his hands away along with Sandra, high-fiving, and putting a product on the field that the Raider Nation is really proud of. And like I said before, I am humbled and honored to be a kid from inner city Los Angeles, to be the head coach of a team that he grew up watching, rooting for, cheering for, rocking the colors, rocking the starter jacket, and now sitting here doing each and every day with the purpose of one thing only, just win. Thank you. Ashley and Jade are on each aisle here. Please state your name and affiliation. We'll start with Vinny. Hey, uh, Tom, uh, congratulations. Um, Thanks, Ben. Uh, see you here in Las Vegas. Uh, from your perspective, your track record, your history, uh, the respect that you have in the NFL, I'm sure there were other you know, opportunities out there for you. What about this organization at this particular time you piqued your interest? You know, it's kind of what I said from the beginning. I mean, there's just such a storied history here and tradition. Um, I, you know, I grew up as a kid. I was obviously a football fan, NFL fan, been in the league a long time. Um, you know, it'd be a chance to be part of an organization with the L. Davis legacy. Um, it's just, it's just like, it's so exciting to have. And then on top of that, I mean, you look at the resources that are here um, and the head coach that's here, um, I think we can win. That, that's why I want to be here. There's, there's two things I was really looking for. One was fit. I want to work with people that I like. Um, and two, I want to win. And those two both go together, that we can win and work together and really enjoy this journey. Because it's a tough journey. I mean, it's a hard job. We all know the pressures that come with the job. Um, but we can work side by side with a smile on our face and get things done. So there was, you know, two things, find the right fit and a chance to win. And that's what they have here. To Sean Reed with The Athletic, uh, Tom, how would you describe your roster building philosophy? And then on a, kind of a second part of that, how, does you, how do you go about involving the head coach, you know, in that process and making sure that they're consulted along the way? Yeah. Yeah, it's not, I wouldn't even use the word consulted. I mean, when I said partnership, it, it's a partnership. So um, obviously there's a lot of people that are part of the process. You've got a scouting staff and a coaching staff. Um, you kind of bring it all together in the end um, and make decisions. But, you know, as far as building the roster, you know, you're working through the vision of the head coach. You know, how does he want to play on offense? How does he want to play on defense? How does he want to play on special teams? And you build it that way. Um, and there'll be, there's a lot of discussions. You work through things. Um, we're going to be able to bounce ideas off each other. Um, as far as roster construction, um, there's no one specific way to build a team. Um, I, I do believe in the draft, and that's always, I mean, everybody always says that anyways, but I do believe in the draft. But you also have to supplement that with free agency. You have to supplement that with trades. You have to supplement that with signing players that maybe are out of work or on the street looking for jobs and think they can come in and fit. Um, but you have to use every possible avenue you can um, under the constraints of the salary cap, which is you know, basically every move you make, even a draft pick, there's always cap considerations that we have to work through. Um, but uh, I think in this day and age, in this league, uh, you better be flexible with how you build your team. Um, it's because it's so competitive, and we, we all really have the same resource when it comes to money and the cap. So, um, but uh, like I said, it's, it's a partnership for a reason because it's not a one-person job, and I don't have all the answers. So we're going to use all these people that we have, scouts, coaches, and the head coach, and we're going to make the right decision for the Raiders. Tom, two questions for you. Hondo Carpenter, Sports Illustrated's Fan Nation. Um, number one, most general managers, when you come in, it's a place in shambles. AP has it rocking, has it rolling, and it's his team. He's put his stamp on this franchise. How big of a blessing is that to come in? You're not looking, hoping to find a coach. You got him. Yeah, quite honestly, I, you know, when I interviewed for this job, I didn't see it as like it was that the head coach's job was open. Like he's the head coach. 
um, you know, AP came in, you know, in short notice and produced on the field. Um, didn't do anything to not have the job. So he had the job at the end of the year. He was a head coach when I came in and interviewed. That's, that's the way I kind of looked at it. Um, just the way he, he galvanized the team, he galvanized the building, he galvanized the fan base. Um, so that is a huge part of it because um, you have to get that right. Um, so to have that in place, obviously, yeah, big part of, of taking this job is to have that, to have a leader like this um, that we've already seen on the field what he can do. Um, so it's exciting. Secondly, Drew Stanton told me, a mutual friend of ours last night, that one of your strengths as a general manager is relationship, that players can trust you in your word. Will you talk about your philosophy of relationship with players, please? Yeah, I mean, to me, a relationship with a player is no different than relationship with your family, with your friends. I mean, you treat them, treat them well, you're honest with them. Um, it doesn't necessarily always mean that what you tell them they're going to like, but if you're honest with them and straight with them, I think they appreciate that. Um, and, you know, we, what we'll do here, which I know they do already, but, you know, these players for us, they're not just a player with a helmet on. I mean, they have families, they have lives off, off the field. It's important to us to know that and work through that. So, um, and really, when you're in this spot and when you're the head coach and you got players out there battling for you every game, practicing games, training room, weight room, and I, I realize that they're, they're paid for their job, but, I mean, you can't help to have, you know, relationships with those guys. I mean, they're going to battle for you every week. So, and that's the way this business is, the way football is. That's why it's so great. It's the greatest team sport in the world. So, um, yeah, the players are important to me to, to make sure they know that we care and to make sure they know that what they need, um, come see us. Because we'll see, hopefully we can get that done and find the right resources for them. But, yeah, it's important. Uh, I think everybody in, in here, you know, you treat the players the way you treat your family. Antonio, Paul Gutierrez here from ESPN. Um, firstly, I don't know if you guys had a relationship before, you, yourself and Tom, but how quickly did you mention the, the 63 points you guys put on the Chargers? But also... <laughs> right away, you know it. <laughs> I told him I was going for 71. Yeah. We're going to go for two. With go ahead, sir. <laughs> but also, how important is it to you as a young coach, relatively young coach, to have a guy who's been a GM for a decade already in the NFL? Yeah, me and Tom had never met prior. Uh, obviously, I've watched his body of work um, with the San Diego Chargers and then, this, then lastly with the Los Angeles Chargers. But um, obviously, when we met, when he came in the other day, I could see that he was genuine. He was poised. He was calm. He had a plan. Uh, he presented it. It was well thought out. He knows I was poking at him, trying to get him going, trying to get, get that AP juice out of him. But he stayed very poker face, which is like, okay, cool. That's good. Um, <laughs> But I think as this relationship grows, like anything else, you know, it's going to have its ups and downs. Uh, we got to be adults and grown men about it. We got to hash it out. Uh, we got to understand our roles, check our egos at the door like we do everybody else in the building, but understand that we got a plan. And that plan is to do it together, be hand in hand with it. I mean, obviously, if he goes down, I go down. That's just how it is. That's the nature of the beast. We get it. Um, but that's not our plan. Our plan is to win, put a team in place uh, that is competitive each and every week and gives ourselves an opportunity to win. Appreciate the question, though. He did. I did tell him that, right? I, I, we talked about that. Yeah. Yeah, he wasn't happy. He, he didn't see Jack's play, though, right? Can I tell you the story? So, boom, here it goes. I tell him, I'm going to tell it anyway. So, um, <laughs> so, yeah, he's like, ah, you know, I was getting mad. I'm coming down the elevator, and, you know, we're at, you know, where we're, we're at score wise. And we're, we're pushing on defense, and he says he's in the elevator, and I think Jack Jones just intercepted the ball while he was up there. Yep. And he's like, why? Like, why? That's, that's enough. You never see that? anything like it. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, we talked about it, hash it out, said, look, we'll, we'll do that now together going forward. <laughs> Tom, congratulations. Levi Edwards with the Las Vegas Raiders. Uh, obviously, you've been in the league for a long time. Uh, could you give a little bit of a, a scouting report on Antonio Pierce uh, as a player of what you believe in? Of those qualifications and those qualities that he has as a player, what do you think will translate or does translate to him as a coach? You know, that, that's a great question. Um, if you look at his career, um, you know, back to high school where junior college first, then goes Division One. Um, linebacker and then undrafted and then wins a starting job and has a career he had obviously he's a grinder and he works because nothing was given to him um, which yeah you can hang your head on that as a head coach um, because there's a lot of players in your roster they're, they're the same way not, not everyone in your roster is you know Devonte Adams so um, to have that mentality um, that dog mentality that I'm gonna outwork people um, it's great to have so now my scouting report on him I may have to go look. I forgot. I kind of lost track. I may have to go look that up. But we had a couple games. He was with the Colts. Yeah, that was way back. I think my files are gone from the Colts. But uh, no, he was a player to be reckoned with for a long time. 
uh, because of his instincts, his smarts, and he can run to the football. So as we're looking for defensive players, we can just point to the head coach, hey, like if you can play like him, you can play for us. Uh, Vic Tafer from The Athletic. Uh, congrats to both you guys. Uh, Mark mentioned there's work to be done. I'm uh, wondering, what are you guys looking for in an offensive coordinator? Here's that. Yeah, that's a great Minimum 24 points. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, I'll be honest. Uh, just like everything else that we've done throughout this process, I, I honestly believe this. I don't think everybody's meant to be for the Raiders. I don't think everybody's meant to play for the Raiders or coach for the Raiders. I think that's going to be something I really dig into as we go into that process. Uh, but more importantly, somebody that's um, – the way the game is, you know, and you know, AP wants to run the ball. No, AP just wants to run a style of football and, and run the, ball the, way, the, the football style a certain way. But it's, it's the approach. It's being a teacher. It's being somebody that can stand in front of this room and the man that's looking at him like you looking at me – that they believe in the plan and the process and that they're a teacher and that they can adjust on the fly, right? Because that's what this game's about. Style of play, I think that's all going to vary. There's a lot of things that goes into that, right? I mean, we know that we have some positions on our roster that we need to look at and evaluate even more with Tom and myself as we, as we go forward. But you know, you, want, you know what you've seen in the National Football League. You got to be able to run a football, play action pass, and what are the Raiders known for? the vertical passing game, right? So we want to see the shots down the field. We want the expl explosive plays. So that has to be a part of the creativity. Uh, you know, you look at the shifts, the motions, all that stuff goes into it. I'm not going to give my whole hat away and tip, but just think of when Raiders are playing really good football, and that's going to be your offensive coordinator, hopefully, as we go forward. I'll just go with his answer. No, Tom. I think, I think you know, one thing I talked about in the interview is um, you want to have an identity, the Raiders have an identity on offense. It's speed and get the ball downfield. So I think that's going to definitely want to be at least part of that. Um, but there's more that goes along with that um, as far as being able to run the ball when you have to run it and play action pass. But we'll, we'll find the right head coach or the right offensive coordinator that's going to fit this team at this time. Q Myers, Raider Nation Radio, 920. And, Tom, with that being said, with it being the end of January, how do you attack this offseason knowing the draft's right around the corner? And how important is it that you're coming from the AFC West so you have familiarity with the division already? Um, yeah, I think it helps. I mean, the, um, you know, like, like AP said, the first goal is win the division. So um, I do have some experience there. Um, yeah, it's going to be, uh, you know, thankfully the draft's in April, so we have some time, but we got a lot of work to do. I, I need to get caught up. Um, with our guys here and more than likely what I'll do, I'll, I'll kind of adjust to them from here through April rather than have them, you know, 10, 15, 20 people adjust to me. So um, we start on that this morning. We'll get moving on that. But I'm um, looking forward to really getting in depth with the pro staff, the college staff. And but we got we got plenty of time. We'll be good. The last time we spoke to you, you talked about not enjoying the moment. You were just grinding. So can you take us in that moment after Mark told you you got the job, your dream had been reached, can, that first time you had to reflect after you got it, can you take us into those moments and your thoughts, please? Yeah. Um, I did probably like I did on you know, October 31st when I got the first phone call. I walked outside to our practice field and just looked around. It was quiet. It was dark. You know, looking at the stars, just kind of looking up there and just saying, you know, wow, you know, um, surreal. And then just really take it in a moment. And as you can tell, enjoying the moment, right? Today's about, today's a celebration. Today's the first step. You remember what I said when I first got in front of you? I said, my worst day is going to be my first day. Well, this is my first day, and this is going to be my best day, and I'm going to celebrate it, and I'm going to enjoy it. I'm going to have fun with it because I know there's going to be some ups and downs. There's going to be some, some days where, you know, you want to go hide in a corner <laughs> and don't want to talk to nobody. That's why when I first got the conversation, I first got the call from Mark that I went outside by myself and looked up, looked up to the sky. Uh, Case Kiefer, Las Vegas Sun, congratulations uh, to both you guys. Tom, uh, and I know, I know you said it's going to be part of the process to really dig into to what you have here, but I'm sure some of that's already started, just getting ready for the, the interviews and things. Uh, what, what, what stood out about these rosters and some of the decisions you'll have to uh, make coming up? Yeah, I tell you, the one thing that's kind of jumped at me, like obviously in the division, you know, I know the Raiders pretty well, but I knew I know him as an opponent, which is just completely different than knowing this team from being in this building, you know, the practices every day and everything that goes into being a football player at this level. So um, I've got a lot of learning to do right now to get 
like up to speed with everything in the building and then get up to speed with like the whole roster. Like I said, it's just a big difference knowing them as opponents and rather than knowing them as, you know, as the GM of this team. So got a lot of work to do coming up here. But thankfully, AP's here, so that's going to make the transition a lot smoother. Mark Anderson, Associated Press, um, free the one of you. People always wonder about the quarterback. What's their evaluation of Aiden, and what do you think about the position going forward? Yeah, I'll tell you what, what I just said before. It's like I have a lot of learning to do to figure out this team from the inside, not from the outside. Um, obviously, Aiden played pretty well against us, so that's, that, that's a plus. But um, I need to get a lot more in depth with this team as far as more than just a couple games and then talk with the staff. So we, we got to do that at every position. Um, and that's really probably number one is, at least for me, I have to get to know this team as well as I knew the team I just came from, which I don't yet. Uh, but I'm going to get there pretty quick. I thought you saw growth with Aiden, to be honest. I thought at the end of the season he was playing some really good football. Obviously, that led to some wins for us. But taking care of the football, being responsible, being more vocal, I think he put himself in a position to learn what it's like to be a pro in offseason because he could reflect on what he just did, right? If he didn't have those opportunities, he would never know what mistakes he made. So I think it was a great learning tool for him. Now that we have it on film, like Tom said, to evaluate it and really look at it going forward. Uh, Antonio, Jesse Merrick, NBC Las Vegas. Uh, now that it's come to fruition, what did it mean to you, just the, the support that you got from the guys in your locker room, uh, you know, pushing for you to get this job? Yeah, I mean, there, there's nothing like it. The reason the National Football League is the greatest um, sport in America is because of the players. And when the, most of the time when the players speak, we listen. When the players play, we watch, right? And they did both this year. So to have that support, being a former player, to understand what it's like, and now the way and the day of air, the age we're in, where your voice matters and you have a lot of platforms to do it, you just got to be careful, right? got to be careful. We love support, but never take it too far. But it was humbling. It was, um, it was a special moment, but it was even more special when you, you get the phone call from Mr. Davis that you're the head coach of the Las Vegas Raiders. More questions, guys? Okay. Thank you, gentlemen. Thanks for coming. Thank you, media staff. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so there you have it, Antonio Pierce yeah. and uh, Tom Telesco uh, were announced and I think just impressive and, uh, and emotional. Yeah. If, if you know Antonio Pierce, if you followed his career, if you're a fan of the Raiders and you watched what he did in the last nine weeks, um, you really felt how important this job is to him, how coveted it is, and how he doesn't take it lightly. Um, and also from Tom Telesco, I don't know Tom Telesco. I don't know, you know, you, you live in San yeah. Diego, so I don't know if you know him more than me. I just feel like you have a veteran there. Yes. And you feel yeah. like he's got it. He knows his system. He knows the process. Um, how confident he uh, felt when he was asked about the draft. You know, coming in, you got to get ready for a draft. You only have a couple months. He's like, we'll be ready. Yes, yeah. he's done it. Oh, yeah. He's done it a million times. And I think that's what Mark Davis was going for, was the experience. Um, and then the passion you, you put that with the passion of Antonio Pierce. Man, right. is this a duo? Yeah. I'm excited. Yeah, I am too, Amber. And, and a couple of things. You know, with the league, you've been around the league so long. There's a couple of different personalities that uh, that GMs have. Say, look at me. I'm going to build it. You know, I'm out in front. You know, this is me. And that can be successful. But the guys who are grinding, who kind of are really uh, the type that are really looking for – opportunities to make the team better without them being that person that needs to be in the front windshield, right? Yeah. The guy in the background who is just grinding, who understands that's what you felt his like football with Tom team. Yes, yes, that's what you get. Like he's about to study. That's, I, that's yeah, what I feel like right now. Down. He's looking at film. That's right. He's looking at the <laughs> roster. You feel like he's ready to work. Yes, and that's what you get from him. He's authentic. Just like AP is authentic, and they're not trying to, you know, be something that they're not, and that's something that's refreshing. I love the fact that he understands the legacy of this building. Yes, and a lot of people hear about it, but until you walk in, until even in Alameda, when we're in Alameda, it was the same sort of vibe that you could be walking in the building, and hey, that's Fred Blitnikoff right there, mm -hmm. you know, and and he's just there because at at our time he was coaching. 
But, uh, I mean, just you just saw players. You just really recognized that this was a little different building. This was a different um, uh, uh, organization that really valued certain things. And if you were real, uh, that you would have a place here. I like that Tom Telesco mentioned once a Raider, always a Raider. Yeah. Just win, baby. It shows that he is investing in the mantras of this organization yeah. and really fully trying to understand them. Um, I also enjoyed Antonio Pierce because, and he's coming up, he's going he's gonna to join the set, yeah. by the way, so we get a chance to talk to him. But you keep hearing the Raider way, the Raider way. And I was thinking, okay, what is that? I think I know what, I know what it feels like, but I want to hear what is the definition of a Raider way, of the Raider way, and he actually gave that, yeah. which sets the tone. He said it is pride, poise, passionate. Mm -hmm. And I love that. I yes. love that we now know what is expected of the Raider way. It was right. just a question I had, and he answered it. And um, when I came to the Raiders, I was in a similar situation. This was my team when I was young. Mm -hmm. So the reason why I wore 21, a lot of people know this, because of Cliff Branch. Little oh. undersized. I didn't know fat. that. Yes, yes. That's wonderful. Yes, yeah. So when you put on the jersey, the pride thing is about all those great players who came before you. Lester Hayes, Mike Haynes, Ronnie Lott, all those great cornerbacks and DBs that we were known from. Willie Brown, of course, the mm -hmm. great Willie Brown. So that's the pride and understanding, hey, you're not the first one to put on 21, bro. You're not the first one <laughs> exactly. to, it's know, not about to you. walk on the sideline. Yeah. yeah, so that's that pride, right? The poise comes from being in difficult situations, but in practice, you have competed, and you have played and competed against the best. So when I was playing, I was competing against Jerry Rice in practice, Tim Brown in practice, all those great players. So when you're in those critical situations in the game, you're not worried. If I'm going against whoever from the Kansas City Chiefs, bro, I'm working against a Hall of Famer in practice. So I have the poise to be able to get it done. So those are the things that are realistic when we take those sayings and we take them onto the football field. Mm -hmm. That's why for this organization, they are so important to, uh, to, to really stand, stand by because those things are real. And when you start to understand what this organization is trying to accomplish – and, and, and if you have an opportunity to either coach or play for this organization, you're, you're trying to win a Super Bowl. Yeah. And uh, nothing less. That's a standard. And he set out that vision, Antonio Pierce. You know what I loved? I love he said ill intent. I know. <laughs> he <laughs> said <laughs> ill intent. <laughs> <laughs> I can remember a player, a baseball player, who told me, you need to go to that place with bad intentions. And that is what he, that That's is so right. greater. Yeah. He said ill intent, full right. blown Max Crosby yes. effort. Yes. That's yeah. why people buy in to him. Also, I love how much he understands the soul of Raider Nation. Yeah. He understands what this team means to the fans who are the best fans yeah. in football. He's, and he invited them. Black out the entire yeah, stadium. Right. Let's make this Allegiant Stadium a place you don't want to come for a little vacation. Right. You're going to go home sad yeah. on your airplane. <laughs> and um, he said, uh, what did he say that I really loved? I'm trying to, to read my notes because there's so, so much. One of the things that um, he said about Raider Nation was a lot of people, we understand that we affect a lot of people with wins and losses. Yes. That is directly yeah. to the fans. We understand how much that hurts you when we don't do what we're supposed to do on the field. How many head coaches address the fan base and understand the soul of the fan base the way Antonio Pierce does? Not like he does, but a lot of them do. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of lip service out there mm -hmm. with, hey, you know, once a Raider, always a Raider. A lot, of, a lot of people can say that. Yeah. But to understand, and that's what makes Antonio, Coach AP, so personable to Raider Nation, is he understands that if you are a part of this organization in any way, on Mondays, wherever you are at your job, people are affected because, oh, man, the Raiders lost again. Or, oh, man, you guys are going through this again. Yeah. That's a real thing in Raider Nation. Right. When you are, you know, uh, working at you know, the airport and, you know, that Kansas City Chief fan comes through and is like, aha, we got you guys again. That it affects it, you. It affects you. It really does. You and I going through the airport and we have our Raider gear on, you yeah. know, and people are like, ah, yeah. you know, but the last four weeks we were like, ah, yeah, we're like, what? <laughs> we're like, on? what? Yeah. So he understands that. And that's real. And it's a one 
another one of those authentic things, authentic things about AP that gets it done. He's so authentic. And Tom Telesco, it seems like, um, is trying to get to know AP. And mm-hmm. it seems like they have a really cool little relationship yeah, there. Yeah. But Tom said um, he has the leadership qualities that it takes to be a head coach. But he said he has the don't follow me, join me yes. mentality. And as right. a player... What does that mean as a play? Is that why the players are so behind him? It's not do as I say, follow me. It is we're in this together. Yes. How can we work this out together? Yeah, that how goes can a long we, way with grown men. It, it really does. How can we get this accomplished together? Well, okay, I know you have your way of kind of doing things, but let's try this way. And I'm try this way because I know it has worked in the past. Mm-hmm. And, and 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 those kind of things that we talk about when a coach gives you opportunities and he gives you things that you can utilize on the football field to be successful. Those are the things that we always come back to and say to ourselves, man, I really like that coach. Like yeah. when you start thinking about your career, you're like, man, what coach affected you? Well, man, you know what? Like, for instance, for me, like John Gruden gave the players a lot of freedom to be able to get in and voice their opinion. Mm-hmm. Buddy Ryan gave his players a lot of freedom to really execute on the practice field. And if those things work, you go to the game and do those things. Antonio Pierce does the same thing. Right? He's going to adapt to what the player is, uh, is able to kind of retain. retain. Mm-hmm. One thing that he said earlier in his press conference, maybe like, you know, in a week, now 17 or 18, all players learn differently. Right. Mm-hmm. So it's my job to be able to get to that player. And if you need to see something and hear it, I'm going to do that. If you're a kind of player who just picks it up on the first time. Great. But not all players are like that. So he really dug deep into the psyche of the player wants to get the best out of the player. How can I teach this player to be able to uh, learn efficiently and be able to adapt on the football field? And that's why we love him so much. And I want to get your opinion just on. His development as a head coach, because, look, he got plucked out of nowhere. I mean, he gets a call on October 30th or 31st. He probably had no idea that he would be next in line to be the interim if something happened to Josh McDaniels. Right. And all of a sudden, you're standing on the sidelines. It is different than when you're a position coach. It's different than when you are a coordinator. You're calling those those first couple of games. You've got to make decisions when to throw the flag. Are you going with analytics? Are you going with game field? All of these decisions. Did you see him grow in confidence, decision-making, all of those things that you look for? Because, look, he's learning how to be a head coach. And I feel like we really saw progression, in my opinion. But I want to get your take on the nine weeks, the body of work we saw. We did. Uh, First, you have to set the standard and the message across the board and let everyone know this is the standard. There can be nothing less, whether that's practice, whether that's meeting, whatever it is, preparing for the games, this is the standard we have to uh, go by. And you present an example, and you say, okay, let's take Max Crosby, for instance. Let's talk about how he practices. This has to be the standard. So everyone understands and knows exactly what's expected of them Monday through Saturday. That's the first thing. The second thing, as a coach, once you set that standard, you can't have yeah. any you can't have any fluctuation it's clear. in that stand. It's clear mm-hmm. and in present, right? Everyone's gonna be treated this way because we expect you to do these things. So when you get into the games, of course, for Antonio, it's gonna be completely different. You're not calling offensive or defensive plays, but for your staff, you said offensively, I wanna be physical. I wanna establish the run first, and then I wanna be able to take shots down the football field. Who do we have on the football team who's going to be able to execute those things? Okay, do we have those players? Yes, coach, we have those players. So now you execute that in practice. If I'm not familiar, which he said he wasn't, offensively with some of the offensive line calls, you sit in those meetings through the week offensively Mm -hmm. because you know defensively you're good. So you want to make sure your weaknesses as a coach are strengthened by the understanding of the communication, of what's being called, how you set those plays up to be able to get those results. So, again, he's gone through those things the first couple weeks of the season, made some calls flag-wise that weren't Mm -hmm. great. You go to the analytics people, you sit down with them, you kind of get an understanding of what they're trying to do. So by week eight or nine for him and week 17 or 18 for us, he has a clear understanding of what he's trying to implement and how that implementation is going to be shown and done on the football field. 
That's interesting. So the best head coaches you had, they would show up into different room meetings based on the weaknesses of the previous game yes. to learn more, to strengthen that that part of it. Yes. For in sake, if you have an offensive coach and defensively we're struggling a little bit, he's going to spend a little more time in those offense on those defensive meetings mm -hmm. just to get an idea. OK, what are we doing here? Why did we? Why were we in zero covers at the end of the game? Was that something where we saw a matchup issue, or was that just something that was called because, hey, that was the thing that you did four years ago? Yeah. Right? So I think I, I thought Antonio did a great job of really providing players opportunities to make big plays because offensively, he was in those meeting rooms. And yeah. he said, you know what? I do have a lot of confidence in Illuminor playing left tackle when our when our starter guy goes out. Because I was in those meetings. I understood kind of what the vocabulary was. Because the first week, I was hearing things that I really didn't know what was going <laughs> yeah. on. Off in, offensive line, what are you talking about? Meeting, right. like the whole year. Yeah. yeah. So it was really important for him to be able to coach those players to understand their language. Yeah. You know, as the team's the back, you know, we're talking about stuff that offensive linemen, we're still, we're playing football, but yeah. our conversations, our vocabulary are totally different. So it was very important for Antonio to understand all the languages of his football team. I think he did a great job at that. And we saw the results. The offense yes. got better, and yes. that's a direct result. All right, we're going to take a break. When we come back, it is the voice of the Raiders, Jason Horowitz, coming up next to talk about the new era of Antonio Pierce. Intercepted down the sideline. We told the state of Nevada. Touchdown. That you're getting more than a football team. The highest point total in Raiders franchise history. You're getting an army. You got to stay involved no matter what it is. We have a commitment to this community. And working in the community is the thing that we do the best. One night. One cause. One nation. Be there as we put the helmets down and our hands out in support of Nevada. Introducing the inaugural Las Vegas Raiders Foundation Silver and Black Gala. Featuring players, coaches, alumni, and entertainment. Join us in providing help and hope to those struggling with mental health issues. Secure your spot today. I'm humbled, I'm honored, and I don't take it lightly. All right, back now with breaking news. I love Antonio Pierce. Antonio Pierce's team now. I was born a Raider. The short story, the matter of fact, is I grew up in Compton, California. I was born with the Raiders rolling in the Coliseum in L.A. Sold out Los Angeles Coliseum. I was rolling with N.W.A. talking straight out of Compton. Rocking Raider hats. So that's what set me up for this. I was born this way. That is us against the world, and that's our mentality going to be right now. Us against the world. Raider Nation against everybody else. He's sat touchdown Raiders! And it's picked up! Amazing! The Absolutely beautiful! So Antonio, by all means, bro, you deserve to be the head coach officially. Woo! <laughs> that was a big player. I rap with AP, man. You tell the players respect them, and I think in professional sports, when you can be a leader of men and they, and they respect you, you can get a lot more out of the team than a lot of people can. Oh, man. That's different. That's different. I got the ultimate respect for him. The guys do as well. That's all you can ask for. You know, he's a leader of men. So he embodies what it means to be a Raider. I like the way it feels, too. And hopefully, you know, we keep AP. You hear the fans, you hear the, you hear the crowd. You hear the chant from the crowd. And if you can't make it out, we'll do it for you. That chant by Raider Nation is AP, AP. They clearly want Antonio Pierce to be the head coach of this franchise moving forward. New day, new chapter, new mindset. Good Lord, I'm emotional. <laughs> I am pumped up. Jason Horowitz, the voice of the Raiders, joins us now. Jason, when you made that call and you realized what was happening in a game that on paper didn't mean anything, but it meant everything to the fans and the players that clearly wanted the future to be in AP's hands. What was going through your mind the minute you felt that? Well, 
I mean, first of all, great to see you guys again. It's been a couple of weeks. Yeah, I wish we could play next week. I don't know why we don't have an <laughs> NFL season 52 weeks a year. EA, is you're going to go into the Hall of Fame? Can you make that happen? Uh, <laughs> uh, no, but I listen. I, it was you know meaningless in terms of playoffs. Yes, but we all knew it wasn't meaningless in terms of. And not not that I think it mattered necessarily exactly what happened against the Denver Broncos as to whether or not Mr. Davis was going to hire Antonio Pierce full time, but. But, you know, it had been very clear leading up to that game that Raider Nation wanted Antonio Pierce, and, and the players had responded to Antonio Pierce. And, you know, Lincoln and I came on the start of the broadcast by talking about what Devontae Adams and Max Crosby had said leading up to that game. So when you come out and beat the Broncos the way that they did, and it was a very good win, um, you you know, it's important to take the whole moment and put it out there, and, and that's kind of what came to be. I say so you have a great view of this Raider football team. And uh, when AP took over, what are some of the noticeable improvements that uh, you saw right away? Well, energy, right? I mean, that, that's certainly something that everyone felt, I think. Um, and I, this might not be a fair characteristic, but I feel like mood changed. You know, like even, even after the 3 nothing loss, the mood the following week was different and it was a short week and it was a game that seemingly wasn't in, but it turned out to be the three, nothing to 63 franchise record, you know? So the bounce back effect was there that, you know, the other part of the, 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 the Raiders this year, after the firing of Josh McDaniels, they were in every game all the way down to the end, every single time dolphins game chiefs lost. Obviously, three nothing loss to the Vikings, Colts game, every single game. So, so they had those options, they had those opportunities, and I and I do believe the relationship and the belief between coach and player and vice versa changed. And you know, I think that displayed on the field. We just heard Antonio Pierce speak to the press for the first time as the official head coach of the Raiders, and one thing that he spoke about was our vision is to win the division. Make the playoffs, hoist the Lombardi. It's very clear. Yeah, you got to win the division. He went three and one in the division, and let's go back to that Kansas City Chiefs game on Christmas Day. What do you think that one win, as you captured that moment so beautifully over the radio? What do you think that one win did for the future of not just Antonio Pierce but the Raiders organization? Because it felt pivotal. It it did. Um, it, it 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 felt pivotal in the moment. Um, it also felt like, and I'm not really sure how to, how, how to put the balance of this because it was Christmas day and it was freezing, but, but it also felt in a, in a way that like, Hey, the side of the ball that has been tortured by Patrick Mahomes, isn't going to be tortured by Patrick Mahomes anymore. <laughs> um, now if they go ahead and win in Baltimore this week and win the Super Bowl again, then I, you know, there's still the, it's still the same thing. There's still the. The mountaintop, they're still the team that's won the division eight times in a row. They're still the team that the Raiders want to hate and the whole thing. But at least there's that there's that sense of the monkey is off the back. The we can beat this team. We can, you know, handle Patrick Mahomes. And at least for the moment, heading into the next game against Kansas City next year, whenever that is, there's a sense of confidence, which I don't think they had had. Yeah, I'll tell you. What about uh, Tom Telesco? He used to be the Chargers GM. He's had great success yeah. in this league as far as uh, players. Uh, now the new GM of our Las Vegas Raiders. Yeah. I saw Jesse Merrick uh, <laughs> say, hey, it's AP and Tommy T. Are we, <laughs> are we going with that? Is that like a definitive? Are we going with Tommy T? I don't Tommy think so. T? I don't think <laughs> that's, so. That's what we were, I don't think so, right? Yeah, no. Okay. All yeah, right. we're gonna veto that. To yeah, know. if I have a vote, just help me out. Yeah, I'm here for you. I'm here. I'm, I'm here for you. Okay. <laughs> um, no, I listen. I, I you know, first of all, 11 years as a general manager, 11 seasons as a general manager is a very long run. Is a very long run for anybody in this or in this league. So that is a big deal. So that certainly is a part of this here. Um, and then you know, where the guy has had a lot of success in the NFL particularly with, high, with higher draft picks. Um, you know, he's had a lot of first-round draft picks that have been big hits 
uh, in the NFL. And, you know, I think that's certainly something Raiders fans are going to want to see. You know, if you think about some of the criticisms of Raiders drafts over the last 10 years, it's been some of the misses um, within the higher round. And so I think that's certainly a big deal. But I also think, you know, he's an experienced general manager. And I do think that that is something that this is maybe as we look moving forward, that they wanted to do, you know, the last three general managers were not guys who had been general managers before. And so I, I think maybe we didn't know it going in, but it's quite possible that maybe that was something they were looking for when you're hiring Antonio Pierce. One last question, uh, Jason. We heard Hondo Carpenter from Sports Illustrated ask a great question about usually when you're coming in as a general manager, you're kind of coming into a train wreck, yeah. right? The reason that you are there is because things didn't work out. Kind of assess the situation and how unique it is that Tom Telesco is walking in where you've got three all pros on the roster. You've got yeah. Antonio Pierce already here. I mean, probably one of the best situations you can walk into as a new GM. Well, I I think so. But at the same time, you know, you're walking into a situation where you and, and you, by the way, you're walking into a situation with great cap space, you know, at, yeah. least, at least heading into the offseason. So I think that's something else to, to make mention of. Um, you know, I, I, th- I think any coach or GM would love to walk into a situation where you have a Hall of Fame quarterback already there. <laughs> so, so I think, you know, we know we're that part of it at the moment. You know what the signal caller situation will be. I think we all agree that Aiden O'Connell did enough to prove that he is absolutely worthy to be part of this league and, and, and maybe be a starter for a long time to come. Um, so we will see what happens with that. Um, there's no question that he's walking in when you got a guy – in Max Crosby on one side, and I think the way that Tyree Wilson came along in the month of December looks like that, you know, you hope that step year one to two makes that big leap. Um, you're walking into a defense that in the last nine games of the year was the number one scoring defense in the NFL. You're walking into something that has the pieces. Um, but I think also, in, <clears throat> excuse me, we would have said that, at least from the outside, they would have said that two years ago, right? Okay. Playoff team, Derek Carr. Devontae Adams, you add in Josh Jacobs, you know, you would have said that. And then we, you know, kind of seen what had happened two years ago with the defense and then this year with the offensive struggle. So you're coming into a GM who's got, a, you know, you'll have to sign some parts. You'll have to figure out the trajectory of where you're going to go. Um, another draft class here where you have all of your draft picks, basically, um, and room to sign some key players. And, you know, as Lincoln Kennedy has anything to say about it, Along the offensive line, please, <laughs> is where is where he would point that to go. <laughs> exactly. And we're going to be talking to your buddy Lincoln Kennedy coming up a little bit later in the <laughs> show. But I'll tell you, uh, thanks for joining us, Jason. If if the drafts that Tom Telesco had at the Chargers are any indicator of the type of personnel that he brings in yeah. as rookies, I am very excited about this rookie class in 2024. All right, Jason, we'll catch you next time. Hopefully we'll see you back here soon. All right. See you guys soon. Thank you. All right, coming up next, we're going to be talking to Daniel Jeremiah. Also, we're going to be sitting down with Antonio Pierce as we continue to cover the announcement that AP is the head coach of the Las Vegas Raiders. You're listening to Upon Further Review. I'm your host, Eddie Pascal. Good morning, Raider Nation. Welcome to Raiders Roundtable. JT, along with Q Myers. He dissects the play quickly and makes the move to the football. Be a Raider is to be bold, powerful, and loyal. What's a Raider? Always a Raider. Raider Nation family is authentic. With the heart here in Las Vegas, we are often imitated, but can never be duplicated. Why? The autumn wind is a Raider. Because there is only one nation. Keep up with the 2023 season by downloading the mobile Raiders app or visiting Raiders.com slash connect for scores, where to watch, and what's happening next. Well, Daniel Jeremiah is our next guest, and uh, he joins us after taking a break from some of his draft media that he's doing today. But uh, you as the color commentator, DJ, for the Chargers, you've worked very closely with Tom Telesco. And by the way, hello. We're just rolling through. We're doing pressers. It's a big day for us. But um, 
you you've worked very closely, and uh, I wanted to bring you on just to ask you what is this team getting in Tom Telesco? Well, first of all, it's great to see you, Amber. It's uh, it, it's someone that I've gotten to really know over the last six or seven years. I didn't I knew of Tom uh, for a long time, but didn't get a chance to really get to know him until I. Uh, start doing these Charger games and get a chance to spend a lot of time with him, you know, traveling with the team, being around them on the airplane and in and, uh, and hotels. And we've become pretty close. And, and what I'll say is the Raiders are getting somebody that's a great A human being. Uh, you know, I know uh, a lot of times people get hired and they always say the same. Hey, he's a better person than he is at whatever job that he does. <laughs> but it's it, it's legitimately true. Like Tom cares about people. He cares about the people he works with. He is an incredibly hard worker. Um, he puts everything he has into it. And I think that he'll earn the respect of everybody in that building. You know, you guys will see it. As soon as, as he's in there, you're going to see how hard he works and how well he gets along with everybody. Um, he's a good leader. He's just, a, he's a good guy. Uh, and I'm excited for him. Uh, I hate to see him uh, stay inside the division, uh, call him the Charger game, see him go to the Raiders. But uh, I'm happy for him and his family, no doubt. Well, uh, Amber, I'm not sure if you know DJ and and I are both six one nine guys from San Diego. I know so, San yeah, Diego. Yeah, guys. yeah, there we go. Uh-huh. <laughs> so, Reverend DJ, good to talk to you, man. Uh, what, what? Good to see you. Like when you're talking about building a team, I mean, he has some superstar mm-hmm. players out there. What does a uh, you know Tom Telesco kind of team roster look like? Well, you know, first of all, he's uh, he's been able to identify the most important position, which is the quarterback position. Now, when he got to the Chargers, Phillip Rivers was in place. Uh, but then, you know, every year doing your homework on quarterbacks and try and find that next guy. And, you know, you kind of look where the Raiders are positioned right now. Um, Aiden O'Connor did some nice things last year. He's going to have to decide, is this where you want to move forward here? Or do you want to try and identify somebody uh, potentially in the draft or free agency? But from his time around Peyton Manning uh, with the Colts to his time around Phillip Rivers and then Justin Herbert, he's he knows what it looks like to find, you know, that right quarterback. So that's where it all starts with team building. And then after that, um, you know, finding impact players, um, uh, you know, throughout the draft, finding guys that are, you know, that are playmakers. He's been able to to do that at all different positions. So, look, everybody that, that does this long enough, you're going to be able to pull out a player here, a pick there and say, man, you like to have that one back. Uh, but that's that's true for everyone. But but I think he does have an idea of how to properly build a team and, and the teams he's been with have all been built through the quarterback. So I would think that's going to be the first order of business. When you look at his draft strategy versus his free agency strategy, which you've historically seen from him working with him, how does that balance usually work out? Well, I think they've tried to use uh, both avenues. You know, the offensive line, if you go back um, and, you know, you watch that division, if you go back three or four years ago, towards the end of Phillip Rivers' career, the offensive line had kind of fallen apart. You know, they had had a real dominant group during the years where they were really rolling, um, you know, when the earlier portion of Phillip Rivers' career, then the offensive line talent had had a little bit of a drain. But they really kind of fixed it in in one offseason. You know, Corey Lindsley came in. They paid him a lot of money as a center. He came in and established the interior of the offensive line. They drafted Rashawn Slater, who was uh, an all-pro his, his rookie year. And then they filled in around him. Matt Filer was a free agent who came over from the Steelers. Um, they found the Jamari Sawyer later on in the draft. But they did a good job of using, you know, the different avenues to address the same position. Um, and they did it at the receiver position. You had, you know, they've done a really good job. Um, and that should be encouraging to Raider fans of drafting wideouts from Mike Williams to Keenan Allen uh, to Josh Palmer, who's been a really good young player. He's got a, a really good eye for that. AP, uh, you've been around this game a long time, and uh, have you ever seen an interim coach catch fire with, I think the whole <laughs> building here is on fire for AP. Uh, have you ever seen something like that before? Who was a linebacker's coach, not a coordinator. <laughs> like, he could have picked a no, coordinator. No. Mark Davis could have picked a coordinator. He just went and got a position yeah. coach and then just took fire. Now he has a job. Yeah, I mean, there's been times previously where interim coaches have come in and had some success. You know, the thing I would equate it to the the closest comparison, and it's not perfect, uh, but Dabo Sweeney was, uh, I think, the receivers coach at Clemson. And they had a firing that took place and they promoted him to be the head coach. He went on to win, you know, a couple national championships, had that Clemson, you know, went on a decade long run. And it was not expected when that promotion was made that he would be the permanent coach. 
but his enthusiasm that he brought in his own way on the offensive side of the ball at the collegiate level kind of reminded me of that being in the building there in Vegas and seeing not just the energy that AP brought to the, you know, to the staff and to the players, but you could feel it just walking around in the stadium. You know, when I went and spent some time with Eric there in the pregame before that game, that place was juiced up. I mean, there was a lot of energy that he brought and it translated to the way they played. And I, I'm just happy to see the guy get rewarded, you know, because I think he said it best. I don't, and I won't quote him word for word, but when asked, you know, what about your resume? And he said, my resume is on that field. Like I, I just gave you my resume. You got to see what my resume looked like. And I thought that was a perfect answer. It was. I think that one in uh, Raiders versus everybody is the two quotes that were <laughs> that were stand out from him. Um, I know, you, as I said, you're doing a lot of draft media today. You are one of the leading draft experts in the country over there for NFL media. You do such great work. Um, I have to ask you, what do you foresee the Raiders doing at pick number 13? I know that the Raiders don't have an offensive coordinator yet. You don't even know what system uh, they're going no. to have. But... Just knowing the situation they're in, watching them from last year, knowing Antonio Pierce, if you could predict anything. I would predict, um, let's just say offense. Can I just do the vaguest, easiest way to do it and say uh, this defense is in pretty good shape. They can add to it. Uh, but I think offensively, you know, obviously the quarterback position, you have to do your homework on who's going to be there. The top three guys are going to be gone. Now uh, you can explore the the cost of potentially moving up at this point in time. I don't see any of those three teams at the top being willing to get out. So now you're doing your homework on that next tier of quarterbacks, which would be three guys. Um, you're talking about Bo Nix from Oregon, who I, I like a lot as a player. JJ McCarthy would come into the mix um, uh, out of Michigan and then Michael Penix from Washington. Those would be three quarterbacks. You got to really hone in on, do your homework on. Um, and then I think offensive line would be the, uh, the next area that I would look, um, and there's a, it's a loaded offensive line class. All right, Daniel Jeremiah, thanks for taking some time out of your day to talk to us. I hope to see you soon, my friend. Uh, good to see both of you. I appreciate you. All right, coming up next, our buddy James Jones pops in as we continue to cover Antonio Pierce being named the head coach of the Las Vegas Raiders. It's intercepted down the sideline. We told the state of Nevada. Touchdown. That you're getting more than a football team. The highest point total in Raiders franchise history. You're getting an army. You got to stay involved no matter what it is. We have a commitment to this community. And working in the community is the thing that we do the best. One night, one cause, one nation. Be there as we put the helmets down and our hands out in support of Nevada. Introducing the inaugural Las Vegas Raiders Foundation Silver and Black Gala. Featuring players, coaches, alumni, and entertainment. Join us in providing help and hope to those struggling with mental health issues. Secure your spot today. Talk to us a little bit about Antonio Pierce, because, I mean, he's always been your coach, linebackers, but after the pick, man, it was a big embrace with you two. What was said, I mean, I know it's an emotional moment, especially him being your coach from the get-go and you, you getting him a W. Playing for AP uh, means the world to me. I don't want to let him down. Um, being his guy, I was in his room all year. I take it upon myself uh, to go out there and play my hardest for him and for my brother. So anytime we can come out of here with the W, it's a huge win. We're 5-5. Five and five. We're back in business. So we just got to keep pushing, foot on the gas going forward. Uh, I, I know about your story, you know, from SC to ASU to the Patriots and now with the Raiders, your relationship with uh, Coach AP. Talk to us a little briefly about where you are right now as a football player. Man, I could drop a tear, man. It's, it's special, man. It's, it's a special moment, man. Shout out AP. You know, without AP, you know, who I don't know what this will look like, man. You know, from, from the start of it to now, you know, we still going. We still got a, a whole future ahead of us, man. But, man, I, man, I, I can't even put in words what AP meant to me, man. Max, speaking of that building, man, there's going to be some question marks going into this offseason, especially around the head coach. You know, since Antonio yep. Pierce has took over, man, you guys have looked like a totally different football team. What would it mean to you and the guys in the locker room to be able to keep Antonio Pierce around for next year? 
Yeah, you know, it's unanimous. Everybody wants him back. Um, I feel like we've done more than enough to prove that um, we, we built something special. It's not just a fluke. Um, every time we've gone out there, regardless of the, you know, the end result, um, every game has been super, uh, super competitive, and we've, you know, taken a lot of steps in the right direction. So you just feel us out there. Everyone's flying around. The energy is, you know, contagious, and uh, that's something that um, it's hard to come across. And when you have a guy like AP that everyone respects unanimously, um, that's the result you get. So, um, you know, we just got to keep building in that direction and, you know, bring him home. The players made it very clear who they wanted to be their head coach. And to talk more about it, we welcome in the third member of our broadcast team, James Jones. JJ, it's good to see you. It's good to see y'all. What's going on, my family? It is, it is a new day here. And look, the players, I've never seen that. You and I and Eric, we've been around this game a long time. I've never seen players be so unanimously behind one coach, but also so vocal. I mean, saying like they need him here in order to continue what they started. What do you think this means? I know you're very connected to the players, to that locker room, to know that Antonio Pierce is now the head coach. Well, I think this is huge because, I mean, we all know if you want to win over a football team, it starts with the players in the locker room. It has nothing to do with the assistant coaches. It has nothing to do with the GM, the owner, none of that. It has to do with making sure those guys in the locker room believe what you are preaching. And Antonio Pierce, we all know he has a stranglehold on this locker room. They will want to run through a brick wall for him. And I think this had to happen because you see it around the league plenty of times year after year to where coaches get fired and interim coach comes in and players are like, man, we love him. We love him. And, you know, the owners, the GM go a different way. I'm extremely happy that Mark got this right and was able to hire Antonio Pierce because, you know, this is one of those guys that I truly believe if they gave him this job a couple weeks earlier, we might have been in the playoffs and who knows what would have happened from there. But just the ultimate leader of men, and I think that's what this locker room knows. He's going to keep it 100 with you 24-7. He don't care how much money you make. He don't care if you're a free agent. He don't care if you're Devontae Adams, Max Crosby. He's going to keep it 100 with you. And that's what the Raiders need, man. I'm extremely happy. It's a happy time. I actually stretched a little bit today because I'm like, man, I want to come back and play. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, you know, my... <laughs> That's a hammy waiting to pop. I'm, yeah, just, I'm yeah. just putting that out there. And too. the hammy's undefeated. <laughs> the the hammy's hammy. undefeated. Yeah, father time is too. Yeah. Hey, hey, JJ, you just got on this game just a little while ago. And uh, obviously the coaching styles are different, you know, when you got in and, and uh, now that you're retired. What makes AP such a uh, kind of coach who can reach all types of players? Well, I think it's just, first off, it's wanting to play for me. Yeah? You know what I'm saying? I think there's a lot of coaches around this league to where, it's, you know, you sit in there like, man, why are he doing this? Why are he doing that? Why are he doing this? You know, so I think the first step is wanting to play for him. And then as a player, EA, you know, the best thing that you could do is be honest with a player. You know, there's so many coaches around this league that, you know, hey, this is the coaching business, so let's tell him this, but do this. Tell him that. That ain't Antonio Pierce. Antonio Pierce is going, whatever he says, that is what he means. You know, and you've seen that kind of relationship with him and Marcus Peters. It's like, bro, you're a good player. You're making a lot of money. But, man, we done seen you turn down plenty of tackles. All right, that's it. You know what that's saying? a wrap. Like, like, that's it. And, and that's what you're going to get out of him. And I think when players see that, they know that, Number one, he truly cares about them boys in that locker room, and you don't get that from a lot of coaches. And number two, man, I mean, he, he wants to win, and you know he wants to win, and you already know he's going to keep it 100 with you. And I can't say that about a, a lot of the coaches that I played for and played with. JJ, I'm glad that you brought up that point because – it was clear in the last regime there was a lack of connection between the players and the coaching staff. There is obviously a strong connection between Antonio Pierce and these players. He can relate to them. He's a little bit more modern day. Um, he listens to them. But don't mistake in that for being a player's coach because people think just because the players lobbied for him that he's yeah. a player's coach, which means that you let the players dictate what's going to happen. That does not seem – you brought up Marcus Peters. That does not seem to be the case with Antonio mm -hmm. Pierce. What is it about him um, that you think they respect because he will flip to that this is the law and this is the way we're going to do this? Well, number one, he played the game, you know. So everything that these players is going through and everything that these players might be thinking – 
Antonio Pierce has been through all that. So number, you know, that's number one. You know what I mean? Like he he's been there. He's played this game. Number two, he's not going to sugarcoat anything. That's how Antonio Pierce is. You know, what you see is what you're going to get. And as a player, that's all you can ask for. Go out there, ball out, deliver, play your type game. But he's not going to sugarcoat anything. And he doesn't care what your name is. And I think that's the best thing that a coach can do for you. And then not only that, when you have players that buy into a coach that's going to ride for a coach, you know, and players that's going to ride for each other, which we've seen Antonio Pierce bring, that's huge. I remember Coach Mike McCarthy told us before our Super Bowl season, he said, the most talented teams don't win championships. The closest ones do. That's right. And since Antonio Pierce has stepped in this building, this team from top to bottom organization, from, you know, our, from us, us three up there, they are extremely, extremely close and fight for each other. And that is what wins championships. So I'm excited about it. The one thing that I was really excited about, guys, is uh, when a reporter asked AP kind of his resume, and he said, it's on the grass. I love right? that. It, it's on the grass. That's it. You know, that's that's the resume. More importantly, yeah. is in the AFC, the conference, which has kind of you know, been a stranglehold for this Kansas City Chiefs. What impact do you think uh, his, his, his conference record at the end of the season, J.J., gave him a huge leg up on other guys who interviewed for this job, his dominance that last couple of weeks of the AFC West? Yeah, I thought that was huge, to be honest with you. You know, it's, you know, a couple of my buddies asked me, man, how he going to hold up in the AFC West? Well, I'm like, man, listen here. Last time he seen the Chiefs, bop, bop. Slapped him. Last time he seen the Chargers, bop, 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 bop. <laughs> you, you know, last time he seen the Denver Broncos, bop, bop, he beat up on them. So, like, I'm like, Antonio Pierce is not worried about the AFC. But not only that, the mindset of this football team does not care that you Patrick Mahomes, does not care that you Justin Herbert, you know, and that's the mindset of Antonio Pierce. And this team really took on the mindset of the head coach. And really, every team takes on the mindset of the head coach. That's why some people be like, man, this team is physical and violent. And this team is not physical and violent. They got the same type. Well, yeah, because it's the, it's, it's the head coach. Look at their head coach. He physical and grimy with black Air Force Ones on. This dude out here in white Air Force Ones. <laughs> I wear white Air Force Ones for the record. So, uh, look, you're right. It, there's, there's, there was a change in identity, a change in culture. This team got tougher. They got closer under Antonio Pierce. But, J.J., you talk about those matchups in the AFC West. What was the moment that you knew Pierce was the man for the job? Oh, it has to be on the road in Kansas City. You know, Patrick Mahomes, one of the greatest quarterbacks to ever do it. The Raiders struggled so long trying to win a game in Kansas City. And to go out there with a rookie quarterback, to not throw the ball, pick up first downs, none of that. You won the game strictly on defense. The defense scored twice. You know what I mean? It was just a dominant victory on the defensive side of the ball, which Antonio Pierce controls. He don't really control the offense, but his side of the ball as a head coach, a defensive-minded head coach, to go out there in Kansas City and lock Patrick Mahomes and them boys down and score twice on defense, that was the moment where I'm like, this is a different squad. Antonio Pierce has these dudes believing there is no way that he is not going to be the head coach of the Las Vegas Raiders. And J.J. was right. <laughs> JJ, we know you're a busy man. Thank you so much for joining us. We can't wait to have you back in studio with us. It is a new day. It's a new regime, and it's very celebratory here at the facility. We'll see you back here soon. Not a problem. Thanks for having me. I love y'all. Peyton, all y'all back there. I love y'all, too. <laughs> all right, coming up a little bit later, it is Antonio Pierce, the man of the hour, joins us live right here in studio. Stay with us. You're listening to Upon Further Review. I'm your host, Eddie Pascal. Good morning, Raider Nation. Welcome to Raiders Roundtable. JT along with Q Myers. He dissects the play quickly and makes the move to the football. Raider is to be bold, powerful, and loyal. What's a Raider? Always a Raider. Raider Nation family is authentic. 
with the heart here in Las Vegas. We are often imitated, but can never be duplicated. Why? The autumn wind is a radar. Because there is only one nation. Keep up with the 2023 season by downloading the mobile Raiders app or visiting Raiders.com slash connect for scores, where to watch, and what's happening next. Hey, 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 like we talked about it, man. Blank sheet, new chapter, we write our own script. Write our own script, man. That's just one step, man. You guys know how this go. But more importantly, man, this is about us. This is about you. You guys made up your your minds what we was gonna do and we did it. Exactly what the we said. And then we did it. Hey man, I know the coaches, the whole organization, the whole building is proud of but more importantly, I'm happy for you guys. That shit was rough the last two weeks. Biggest window, the front window. And guess what? Every door we go into, we're kicking that from now on. But no thanks about it, man. Hey man, you know what this time is? I'll see you Wednesday! Cigars going. Yeah. Such a different vibe. He oh. said, he said in his prayer, he, you know what got me like you, James, <laughs> on Wednesday when he said Raider Nation versus everybody. Yeah. I mean, Man. a leader of men, he inspired everybody. And the thing that was missing was the connection with the players. Yep. That feel like we are all in this together. Forget everybody else. We're all at the same level. We're all going to do this together. And we just felt that. Yeah, that's unique. That's like no other locker room mm. in the nation. Mm. That's like that. Colorado locker room at the beginning of the season, right? Yeah. That's the kind of vibe we're getting right now, and it's going to last. That effort is going to be there. You may not win every football game, but that effort, that authenticity is going to be there. He is just so, so right for this job at this point right that, now. That brotherhood and that camaraderie is going to be contagious. Mm -hmm. That feeling they haven't had in a long time is going to go into that Jets game, and it's going to be a tough game, but yeah, yeah. that's hard to capture. I'm putting my money on AP. It's hard to capture that. <laughs> I will see you Wednesday. You know, you know what that just did to them boys right here? You know how hard they going to come out on Sunday and play? Yeah. Yeah. Saying we ain't finna mess this schedule up because we know when we beat up on the Jets, I will see you <laughs> Wednesday. What was that? that was win number one. And joining us is Antonio Pierce. And there was five more wins after that. First of all, congratulations on such a big day for you uh, to be announced as the head coach of the Las Vegas Raiders. Has that sunken in? Can you say it again? <laughs> the head coach <laughs> of the Las Vegas Raiders. No, it gets No, you get chills. Get yeah. Chills. It's uh, it's surreal, but it's it's getting real. Yeah. <laughs> it's getting real because you're going through the process. Um, obviously, I said it from the jump. Humbled, honored to be in this situation. Uh, very supportive of our staff, the organization, and more importantly, the players. Um, they did it. You know, they put everything out there. They gave their hearts along with our our staff to go out there and really put a product on the field that we're proud of. And that's what I talked about. And making you know Raider Nation excited and feel that hope and that joy and that belief that we can go out there and compete with anybody. But more important, we're going to do it our way, right? We're going to do it the Raiders way, and that's what I'm going to keep harping on. That's going to be our culture, and we're going to build on that. Man, I'm so happy for you. And uh, on that clip there when, you know, you gave that uh, victory Wednesday, right, <laughs> the young Eric Allen was excited. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> would have been on the but the old Eric Allen was like, nah, I'm, I'm gonna be in there watching film. I'm gonna right. get ready for the next week, right? right. So uh, just amazing, man. Just uh, so much uh, joy, right? That uh, the Raider alumni, the people in the building who no one ever sees, the equipment guys, the training staff, everyone has your back. So supportive of uh, what you've been able to do so far. Yeah, you know, I think that just goes. Um you know, back to the beginning. You know, when you walk in somewhere, you check your ego at the door, right? It doesn't matter what I've done in my past or who I am or what I've done or accomplished. You roll up your sleeves, you go to work, but you, more importantly, you treat people right. You treat people right, and you love what you do, right? You love what you do. You love coming to the building. You have that joy and that smile. It, today's a good day. Every day you walk in this building should be, today's a good day. Ice Cube, shout out right there. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, alumni, you, you know, you respect that because, yeah, you know, I mean, you go all the way back to yeah. ES, ESPN days. But, you know, when you look and you look on the wall and you go throughout this building and you see the gentlemen who have played here, you know, coaches, players, front office people, I mean, that's what you strive to be. You know, as a player, you strive to be one of the best, right? You want to be a, a Super Bowl champion. You want to be a, hopefully a Hall of Fame review is that were good. And then you become a coach. You want to just become one of the ones that people talk about by the way 
you prepare your team, the way they execute, the effort, the love, the execution, and more importantly, doing it together as one. That, I mean, it's the ultimate team game, right? Where you got all these gentlemen, all these eagles, these big, strong men, but we come to come one common goal each and every day, and that's just to be win, just to win and be the best. Well, we're excited for you, but one of the things we saw right away was uh, it started to change on defense, and then there was just this dramatic improvement on defense, and you guys were the best scoring defense in the NFL over the last nine games of the season. How did that shift happen so quickly? Less is more. Less is more. We, we, we had some talented players um, who I think at times we might have put them in tougher situations than they need to be. But more importantly, I think our staff did an excellent job of – Identifying really what we do well. All right, what do we do well? Let's do let's do more of that. All right, what we don't do well. Let's let's do at least let's do a little bit less of that and put that in the back burner. And then once we kind of found our groove and our rhythm and the continuity amongst, let's say the D line, for example, you start putting two D and three D ends out there. Oh no, hold on, let's put four out there. Hold on, you see that little corner out there, little Jack Jones? How about we put him out there and let him start making some? Put Tyree on the inside. Yeah, put little Tyree bit. on the inside. <laughs> let's make these little tweaks. Nothing. Nothing, nothing mind-blowing, just the adjustments and really adapting to our team and putting the best 11 out there to give us the best chance to win. But more importantly is the buy-in. Mm -hmm. You know, Patrick Graham giving them a clear direction and clarity of what it needs to take place or what needs to take place to win games. And then to me, the style of play. It starts with 98. All-out effort at all times. Then it's the physicality of Robert Spillane. That's Put a that dude. Dude, dude. <laughs> Diablo, let's roll, baby. Here we go. Here we go, Robin. Yeah. Right? Batman Robin. Here we go. Right. And then on the back end, you got Marcus Epps, Trayvon. And then you got these little DBs now. And all of a sudden, got some confidence room when number 18 showed up. Yeah. You know, the swag and the, the belief and the ability to make plays and to make educated guess. The anticipation right. plays that you guys saw, they put that all together. And that's what you, that's, that's what you got as far as the product on the field. Yeah. And, and more than anything, I saw the development, what you're talking about. And... What I was interested in is how did you really give your staff the ability to be able to develop the young guys and the old guys to be able to have the confidence to jump those plays. They have the confidence to line up Malcolm Kuntz the last four or five weeks of the season and say, hey, you know what? Get You can bend. We're going to bend you. You have another move off the bend. But how did the development start from you from a personnel standpoint? Well, I think we talked about it when we got together as a staff. You know, you look at it and say, okay, what did these guys do well, right? Malcolm Coons, not a real power guy. We don't need him to be that, right? But what he does is bend and turn the corner, and he's explosive, right? Okay, cool. Then you start identifying other pieces of the puzzle amongst the whole defense. But I'm going to tell you where it really went, EA. It was in practice. We start competing. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about competing, competing. We were competing, competing. Right. There's no more, uh, I could have made that play. No, go make the play. Yeah. Stop letting Tay run by you. Put hands on Tay. Up front, let's, let's be heavy-handed. We ain't got pads on, but we can touch one another. We can bless one another. <laughs> that competition starts to then carry over in everything we did. Meeting rooms, walkthrough, practice, weight room, how we eat, how we, everything. So now you start to build a culture where everybody feels like, Hold on, let me get my shot. Mm -hmm. And now you got guys jumping to the front of the line instead of being in the back of the line. Put me in, coach. And it goes back even on the practice squad. Having them guys here on the sideline. Yeah. They bust their tails all week long. Coach, I just want to put the, I just put the hoodie on. Yeah. <laughs> I want to look side, on the side on the sideline. <laughs> yeah. Then I need that juice. But guess what? No, coach, hold on. No, no. I want to get on that grass. Mm -hmm. when he, I didn't see it Wednesday, right. Thursday, Friday. And that started to happen, and now you see the development. You see a guy like Janoris, Jink Janoris Robinson step up, and now he's making plays as well, right? First game, boom, he comes and makes a sack. Gets a sack versus the Vikings. I, it just became – it really became like a, a snowball effect, and everybody wanted a piece of it. I call it a shark frenzy. Yeah, yeah everybody was in on it. Um, you have some big decisions to make. I mean, as the head guy, you have to fill out a staff. You don't have an offensive coordinator right now. What does that process look like? Long, going through every – ounce of the roster of staffs film study phone calls text messages really I, if there's one thing i'm gonna do my best at this offseason is find the right gentleman to lead our offense 
Do you lean on a lot of people out, you know, outside of the organization too, just trusted football minds that you trust? Mm -hmm. Do you really pick the brains of those people as well? Yeah, I think being a former player and then working in the previous uh, places I've been, I have a lot of connections and can make those phone calls and I'll get an honest opinion about somebody, no BS there, and they know what I'm looking for. And then they also know, can we work together, which is more important, that continuity, that chemistry, the energy and synergy that I talked about from day one. It starts with myself, Patrick Graham, myself in that office coordinator, myself and our special teams coordinator, Tom McMahon. Mm -hmm. And then I got to filter down through the rest of our staff. So that's going to be the key part, too. It could be a style of play, but if we don't match personality-wise our, with our ideas and our philosophies and how we see the game being played in one, and it's not, and I'm going to keep saying this, be honest, the right away. It's going to be a certain way we play and the way we want to win and want it to look like. That has to mirror up. Now, there's going to be adjustments and changes, but that's the biggest challenge now is just really find tuning that and going through with a, with a real fine comb and just really look at every ounce that I can to make sure I make the right decision. Well, the last one for me is uh, Raider Nation, which we were both Raider fans before we got to the league. Just loved the uh, Willie Brown, Fred Bolitnikoff. I mean, you know, I'm not sure about you, but me, I was in San Diego. I was the only guy on our block who was rolling out a Cliff Branch jersey, right? Mm -hmm. What does it mean to you to represent uh, Raider Nation? It's huge. I'll tell you what, it's getting bigger and bigger now. <laughs> I know I ain't bringing that Impala out down the street. I know that bad boy at. God, dog. Um, listen, um, from the jump, to be honest, that first game against the Giants, the crowd was electric. And then the last game, that was different. Yeah. They were chanting. They yeah. were loud. They made their presence known. We got to make our stadium back to what it used to be. In the other place, right? right. We got Las Vegas, Vegas yep. has to have his identity of Raider Nation and Legion Stadium. Yeah. That's my goal. That's our players' goal. That should be our fans' goal. We do that together. As big as the Raider Nation is, don't, you don't want to come to this bad boy. <laughs> you shouldn't want to come to Vegas. You think it's a fun trip? Hell no, it's a fun <laughs> no, trip. Not, not, not no here. more. Not no not more. Here. That's got to end. Yeah, and, but that's got to be the product, too, of our players and how we play. But it takes everybody. I said that from the jump. When I took her, I said I needed the building. I need a person that opens the front door, that greets you at the front door. The cook. The food tasted bad for a while. Now it tastes good. <laughs> good now. You know, I'm talking about I need everybody in the building to really be in to what we're trying to do. And if we do that, we'll get to where we want. Um, I got to let you go, but one last question. JJ and EA have educated me on the, the Black Air Force Ones. Um, I, I've, I've, been told know that. I've been told I'm soft because I wear white Air Force Ones. So my question is, am I allowed to wear Black Air Force Ones? Can I rock them? Or is that No. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, no, listen, I get Only the white. That's clean. Yeah. I know. I know. Women worry about when you can wear white and all that stuff right in the spring. Stick with my white ones. But when I'll we get in the fall, no. But when we get in the fall, I better have them. The black song. Black right. right. <laughs> Thanks a lot. We appreciate it, Coach, and congratulations. We look forward to working with you this year. All right, coming up next, we are going to talk to Lincoln Kennedy as we break down the day of the announcement. Tom Telasco and Antonio Pierce Raiders. We told the state of Nevada Touchdown! that you're getting more than a football team. The highest point total in Raiders franchise history. You're getting an army. You got to stay involved no matter what it is. We have a commitment to this community. And working in the community is the thing that we do the best. One night. One cause. One nation. Be there as we put the helmets down and our hands out in support of Nevada. Introducing the inaugural Las Vegas Raiders Foundation Silver and Black Gala. Featuring players, coaches, alumni, and entertainment. Join us in providing help and hope to those struggling with mental health issues. Secure your spot today. talking about it for a while. Captains, everybody hit on this week, man. We talked about team. We talked about doing it for one another, playing for one another, playing the game the right way. Passion, accountability, having fun. Tom hit on it. Probably best anybody's ever hit on it before. Trust. Trust. Trust in one another, man. Trust in the coaches, trust in each other, trust in yourself, trust in the process, and believing, and believing. And then doing it together, man. Doing it together. 
with all the doubters, with all the stuff they've been talking about, don't matter. It's okay. We don't want to be like, we want to be respected. Mm. We don't want to be like, we want to be respected. And we've earned our respect. We was close. We didn't get into the P word, but it's there. Just remember what Max, you said and I said. The last and the pressure. How do we end that game? Victory formation. Victory goddamn formation. Victory goddamn formation, man. This is what we said we wanted to do. You guys said we wanted to do. You did it. We did it. Let's enjoy it. There's no need to rush out of here tonight. There ain't no need to rush out of here tonight. All right, we good. We can take time. <laughs> 7 o'clock. We got to push it back. 8 o'clock tomorrow will be 8 o'clock. Make sure we take care of each other tonight. Love each other tonight. Love one another, man. And just remember this moment. And we'll get it again. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah, we'll get it again. We'll run this back. You guys earned it, man. Much respect. Joining us now is ESPN's Paul Gutierrez. And um, Paul, just seeing you were in that locker room. You've been in the locker room the entire time. And it is clear that Antonio Pierce's message got through to these players very early. But then the players went on a crusade. I wouldn't even say a campaign. Right. It was a crusade to keep Antonio Pierce here. And you documented that. What was that like watching that happen? And you've been doing this a long time. Have you ever seen anything like that? Yeah, well, it was it was reminiscent of a couple of years ago with Rich Passaccia. The players campaigned at that point um, out loud. And it didn't really matter much, so to speak, because they, they chose to go a different direction. This time, um, you saw that with social media, players were able to get their message out. With people having their own podcasts mm-hmm. and <laughs> leveling certain the, – the, the, the word uh, trade request never yeah. came out, but if, to say something, everything was on the table, that speaks volume as well. So what, what was interesting to me, though, is I actually just got off the phone with, with uh, Mark Davis, Raiders owner Mark Davis, and he told me what kind of – his intuition came to fruition, basically, because – He's the one that picked Antonio to be the interim coach right away anyway because there was something about him. He went in there intrigued. He came away from that initial interview um, excited. So when he sees all of this happening, and as he told me himself, from the players to the alumni to everybody that works in this office, the feeling was unanimous. Now, that wasn't the reason that he made the choice, but it made it easier because at the end of the day, he said he, he didn't deserve it. He earned the job. Yeah. Talk a little bit about that process. And, okay, you have Antonio Pierce in the house with all the support, but you have to interview other coaches. Yeah. So, I mean, how does that process work? Are you yeah. really looking for a guy, or <laughs> are you kind of just trying to cover your bases? Well, as Amber said, I've covered this team for a while, so I've seen a few <laughs> uh, job searches go on here. Yeah. And in talking with Mark over the years, he actually, the silver lining in, the, in, in kind of the black cloud, so to speak, of this whole thing is, when you do have to fire a coach or you do fire a coach, you do have that opportunity to talk to other people around the league. And that's something that his father, the, the late Al Davis, the Hall of Famer, would do. He would take his time in talking to other people across the league to get a sense of what was going on in the league, to maybe take an idea here, put it in your own vision, get something over there, bring it, to, bring it in-house. So that's part of the process regarding why it took so long. If Antonio was the guy all along, why did it take so long, right? Yeah. Well, they had to check the boxes of the, of the Rooney Rule, which, again, is strange because it's to give – uh, minority candidates a voice outside, the outside of the organization. Though, like yeah. Right. Um, so they did that. They checked the box. And, and I'm not going to say that that they it was a, a fraudulent thing, but they had some, that's something they had to do. And at the end of the day, everything kept coming back to Antonio. They also kind of pivoted. You know, you're hearing yeah. Champ Kelly. I think once Antonio Pierce was hired, many of us believed, okay, they're, stand, they're going forward with what they ended the year with, and that meant Champ Kelly, who's, who's been here. And then all of a sudden Tom Telesco's name kind of came out of nowhere. Right. Um, take us through that hiring process and you as a reporter following that storyline, and then it felt from the outside looking in like it just kind of took a right turn all of a sudden. Yeah, again, don't want to, to scoop myself, but don't want to bury the lead either. I mean, talking with Mark Davis, he told me that Champ remains with the organization. He hopes that he sticks with the organization. Uh, when the season ended, the interim tags left, uh, both Antonio as the interim coach and Champ as the interim GM. He went back to just being the assistant GM, which is what he maintains and, and stays today. So he said he respects him. He appreciates everything he did for him. So he'd love for him to stick around in that role. Now, in terms of everything else, it was interesting because 
football, as we all know, it, 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 who, who's running the ship? Is it the GM or is it the coach? Does the coach actually have a say in the GM's hiring? Who's the boss? Uh, in talking with Mark, he said, no, the, the GM still has final say on personnel decisions on the roster, things like that. So when, when Tom Telesco's name came to, to fruition, it kind of made all the sense in the world there because, again, I'm going to use this phrase, checking boxes. It, it's hard, and Mark told me that he wasn't comfortable with having a rookie coach and a rookie GM at the same time. Now you're looking at a guy who knows the division well, a guy that's been a GM for 10 years, okay, um, and, and wants to be here. So that's where Tom Telesco came, came to the forefront here in this, this whole search. So there's a lot of questions there. A lot of fans wonder, well, what about the, you know, all the, the salary cap issues that the Chargers have right now? That's not a problem for the Raiders <laughs> because they got a guy that's kind of a savant there in Tom Delaney who runs the cap. So you've got uh, Antonio inspiring and coaching. you got Tom running the salary cap. And now uh, the other Tom is going to be, be the GM being more than a scout uh, managing the football org operations. Did, did the Chargers not have a cap guy like that, like a Tom here? That that not not sure. Not yeah. sure right now. Maybe you're scooping me Just on that. Curious so. not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna make some phone calls right yeah. now. Yeah. And Tom Tom is awesome. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. so the relationship between Tom and uh, AP and our cap guy. I mean, how does that relationship and those dynamics work when you are? At the beginning of the year, you like you have the drafts coming up. You have these players. You have so many issues. How does that relationship kind of work out? Yeah, I go back a decade ago when Reggie McKenzie was the GM, and he came in, and his specific and stated goal was he had to get the Raiders out of salary cap hell. Mm -hmm. That was then. This is now. Now you've got a team that's on the rise. You got a team that that responded to to the coach uh, in Antonio down the stretch. The way it works is, and then Tom Telesco said it best, and I think was the most impressive thing he said was. He's coming in as the GM, yes, and as the GM, that, that brings everything with it, the title, the role, everything. But he's coming in. He doesn't know the roster. He's going to bend to the other 20 people, the scouts, the people in the building, and he's going to listen to them. Um, going forward, it'll probably shift back the other way, as it should, but at least he knows what he doesn't know, so to speak. Again, using a line from Mark Davis way back in the day. So that's how that is going to use. They're going to bend off each other. And just seeing their personalities up on the stage, I thought was hilarious because, you know, Antonio's out there. He's in your face. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he wants yeah. to get that AP so juice out of you. Like the so yeah, it was fantastic. <laughs> and yet, being somebody that grew up with martial arts, my dad still teaches in Barca. I said, my plug dad. Um, mm -hmm. It's the yin and the yang. Mm -hmm. You need the hard and the soft. You need the hard and, and the soft, the hot and the cold. Those things have to work together. So that, at least on day one of this, is an intriguing way to kind of look at it going forward. Yeah. I want to I want to go back to something you said because I don't think it's been spoken about enough. The intuition of Mark Davis. Yeah. A lot of us said, wait, what? And Antonio Pierce? You know, we thought maybe Patrick Graham or he had a feeling based on – was that based on really kind of one – interview did he have a hunch that this was a guy that might be able to unite the locker room has mark ever told you what exactly was it mm -hmm. that gave him that intuition that he could do which is what he did is pretty phenomenal yeah what, what he told me at the time and he reiterated today was he was intrigued by him because he had seen obviously if he'd gone to a press conference and as a position coach right we get those guys once a year as a linebacker coach and yet he still commanded he had that presence so if he has that presence in a media room Imagine what he's got in a locker room where those are the guys that are actually going to respond to him. And, and you, would, you would speak to that even more so, Eric. But the, the intuition there was he was just intrigued. And then when he sat down with him, he came away impressed. So it was really as simple as just being curious and going and doing your due diligence and coming away. It could have gone sideways. I mean, you know, what if they lose a couple more games? Then we're having a totally different conversation right now. But because they did uh, win enough games and he won over that locker room, um, we're looking at this here. Now, if they had, had beaten the Vikings and if they'd beaten the Colts, we're having a completely different conversation, yeah. mm -hmm. and they're in the playoffs. But as Mark kept saying, both Tom Telesco and, and Antonio Pierce are the right guys yeah. at the right time for the right team. Mark deserves credit for that. He Mark really, Davis deserves credit for that, yeah. for acting on an instinct, really, and taking a big chance. Yeah, and, and really following up on that is, is there a certain coach that uh, – uh, Coach AP reminded Mark of, and that's why it felt uh, like, hey, this is the right fit. Not, not that I could get because he's had different guys, right? I mean, throughout Oregon, the, 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 since the Davis family has been involved with the Raiders, um, you've had different types of coaches. You and, and really back to back in the glory years, right? You had the manic, compulsive John Madden, followed by the Iceman Tom Flores, and those are the only two coaches that have won Super Bowls for this organization. So. 
Uh, he didn't say there was one specific guy. He was just intrigued. And if you look at what it was, because John Gruden was kind of that manic personality. Dennis Allen, not so much. So these are just guys that, that Mark Davis has, has, has hired. And, and I think, as he said to me, I know as he said to me, it was just the right person at the right time. Well, I think uh, Raider Nation agrees, and the feeling in this building yeah. right now is of excitement and, I th- and hope. And yeah. I think that's uh, something that on October 31st there wasn't a lot of, and that's a short amount of time to really right. turn around a culture and add some hope. Paul Gutierrez, awesome reporting. Can't wait to see your Mark Davis report uh, on ESPN. Thanks a lot. Thank you. All right, when we come back, we're going to talk to Lincoln Kennedy. He's one half of the Raiders broadcast team. He's going to talk about Antonio Pierce and Tom Telesco ushering in the future of the Raiders. You're listening to Upon Further Review. I'm your host, Eddie Pascal. Good morning, Raider Nation. Welcome to Raiders Roundtable. JT along with Q Myers. He dissects the play quickly and makes the move to the football. Be a Raider is to be bold, powerful, and loyal. What's a Raider? Always a Raider. The Raider Nation family is authentic. With a heart here in Las Vegas, we are often imitated, but can never be duplicated. Why? The autumn wing is a Raider. Because there is only one nation. Keep up with the 2023 season by downloading the mobile Raiders app or visiting Raiders.com slash connect for scores, where to watch, and what's happening next. But we always end all our victories a certain way in the locker room. So we got a packed house here. We're going to see how everybody's vocal cords work. So stay with me. You ready? Raiders! Yeah, now we warmed up. See, that's what we're talking about. Antonio Pierce, uh, thank you, Tom. I uh, appreciate it. Uh, thank you, Mark Davis, Sandra, Richard, Tom, Larry, Ken. Uh, The Raiders organization, um, our coaches, our players. I said at the very beginning when I had an opportunity to speak in front of everybody the first time on November 1st, I'm humbled, I'm honored, I'm excited. I'm excited. The challenge that this team took on uh, from November 1st on and what they embraced and what they displayed out on the field is hats off to our organization and our coaches and our players for buying in. It wasn't easy. It was something that probably many people didn't think would happen, as you say, overnight. But when you have good people in the building, when you have the belief, you have the trust, you have the accountability, you earn respect, you do it the right way, you buy in, you understand that nobody's bigger than the shield and the patch, and that you play for a lot more than just the name on your back. There's a lot of people that we affect by wins and losses. We understand that, and we don't take it lightly. I like to thank my family here, Jocelyn, my father, Perry, my kids. My uncle in the back came all the way from Bermuda. Bermuda in the house, Piper. Yeah, Bermuda. I got the island people in here, too. So um, appreciate everybody being here. Where are we going forward? Tom just hit on it. It's great to partner up. I think there's going to be a partnership that we can grow for for many years. Hopefully that comes with a lot of W's and a lot of Raider chants. Our vision is clear. Win a division. Get into the playoffs and host that Lombardi Trophy. That's not a promise. That's our vision. Our philosophy is simple. It's real simple. It's the Raider way. Pride, poise, passionate. A love for the game. And just win. It starts with our DNA, ill intent, physicality, toughness, speed, attitude, full-blown Max Crosby effort. And it goes to our staff with preparation and execution and putting a plan together and executing throughout the week with a smile and a purpose to get a victory on every Sunday that we show up into Allegiant Stadium. It's not going to be easy. It's not going to be overnight. I'm not promising anything no, along with Tom, but I do know this. You're going to get the best out of myself and Tom. We're going to exhaust every 
possible resource, an ounce of sweat, tears, and effort, and night, and minute, and second that we have to turn this bad boy into a consistent winning organization that it's used to and that it deserves. One thing we know, and they're in the room, is our alumni. As you guys saw in the last game, open doors. Post game as well. Raider Nation. That bad boy good. <laughs> that bad boy ready to rock. It rocked the last game. We set the tone in 2024 what it looked look like going forward. And we're going to work this offseason, in the summer, and in the fall until we get to that first home game to see Raider Nation again, loud, rowdy, making it tough for the opponent, that black hole rocking and rolling, the wind club doing his deal, Mark Davis in there clapping his hands away along with Sandra, high-fiving, and putting a product on the field that the Raider Nation is really proud of. And like I said before, I am humbled and honored to be a kid from inner city Los Angeles, to be the head coach of a team that he grew up watching, rooting for, cheering for, rocking the colors, rocking the starter jacket, and now sitting here doing each and every day with the purpose of one thing only, just win. Thank you. What a day it has been for the Raiders as we welcome in Lincoln Kennedy. He is one half of, you know, the other guy, Jason Horowitz, on, on the radio. <laughs> we, we're not worried about him. <laughs> hey, Lincoln, it's good to see you, my friend. And um, you always keep it real, and that's why we love having you on these things. Um, just your reaction to Antonio Pierce becoming the head coach of the Raiders. Well, I, I probably could speak for EA, but I'm I'm excited. I want to go play. And, and I'm old. <laughs> I'm old and decrepit. I mean, he, he got me fired up. Look, you know, this is one of those moves that, and I don't know if EA had the experience, but I, I never really experienced where the players really had an involvement. Other than what AP did, as far as his energy, his prowess, his, his what he did on the sideline, the, all the players stood up for him as a coach. I applaud that. More importantly, what AP did in his short interim phase before the head coach was uh, anointed to him was the fact that he held players accountable. We saw that with Marcus Peters. I accept that. I, I, I applaud that, as a matter of fact. It's long overdue. And, 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 and I think about, you know, when you talk about today's standards, and I, I'm sure EA will say the same, the same, same thing. Today's athlete is a little different than I was accustomed to. Therefore, there has to be a different coaching approach for today's athlete. Whatever you need to do to get that extra little bit of mm out of them is I think what you had AP. You saw AP and his staff were able to do at the, at the tail end of the year. And, and as he mentioned, that win over Denver, that was that was the, the proverbial cherry on top. You know, look, it wasn't a season where the Raiders won it. They weren't in the playoffs, and obviously they won it. They weren't chasing for a championship. But I do think with this coaching move, and especially with the hiring Tom in the front office, I do think this is a move to step forward. This is a move to, to, to really look forward to because we want to see how the rest of AP's coaching career uh, with the Raiders at least goes uh, from here on out. Well, Amber, I, I, again, um, you've done a great job of getting another San Diego guy. Oh, yeah. This, this turning into San Diego. <laughs> Link and I, I always let everybody Raider know. Fan, <laughs> Raiders from San Diego. From San Diego. That's right. <laughs> right. Uh, Link, great uh, great to see you and uh, great to talk to you. Let's a little, talk a little bit about uh, AP and how you saw this team change uh, as far as X and O's are concerned. Well, you know, AP, here's the thing, and you know this. Their, your athleticism, when you're out there in a the football, football field, your athleticism and athletic ability is what got you there. What's going to put you over the top? It comes mental. It becomes mental. It becomes the effort and the enthusiasm that you generate every time you step on that field. And it's hard to duplicate every single game. But you learn as a professional, the best thing that you can do, the best thing, quality you can have as a professional, first and foremost, is to what? Be available. And then know what you're doing. Every coach I ever played for said, if you make a mistake, just make it full speed. Just go out there and, and do play full speed. And that's sort of the attitude I saw the Raiders take over. Look, there wasn't much difference. It wasn't like they completely changed the offensive playbook, the offensive, uh, the defensive playbook. They didn't change that. They still had the same players. They still had the same play, the playbook. But what was the difference in the second half of the season? We saw an energy. We saw an output. We saw guys doing, trying harder. I saw Jermaine Illuminor and guys up front when they had uh, that mismatch lines. They had to play better. I saw that happen. I saw there was better decision-making out of the quarterbacks. I saw them develop somewhat of a running game. I saw all these things happen. But more importantly, 
I saw AP on the sideline doing what he does or what he needs to do, and I think he should do best, manage the football game. I don't want my coach always looking down at a clipboard, crossing off plays, trying to figure out what's coming up next. I want my head coach to manage the football game. And when you talk about good head coaches out there, you talk about Harbaugh and Baltimore and their run. You talk about Mike Tomlin. Those guys aren't, I mean, they're there every day, but they're not making those calls. They're managing the game. And you can see a somewhat success from doing that. And I think AP was able to do that when he had that little interim of the time since he took over. And more importantly, look at the effort that we saw in the football field. It was almost like a night and day effort. And I'm not necessarily saying it's just a coaching change, but there was something. There was something that became infectious in that Raider locker room that made them play hard, allowed them to go to Kansas City and beat the Chiefs ass in Kansas City on, 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 um, on Christmas and follow it up on New Year's Day. That's what I like, you know, and, and after that, with the, the Denver Broncos finishing off, you know, the, the, the season. So when you talk about Amber and A, you talk about what AP brought to this. He brought an energy that was infectious, that was contagious, that carried over, and you saw all the players, not just the stars, all the players get involved. Yeah, and, you know, you kind of reiterate what Tony Dungy told me once. He said the head coach's job is to get everybody to buy in, get everybody on the same page. It's not necessarily to do the X's and O's. You let your coordinators handle that. Um, I automatically think about the decisions now. Okay, now you got the job. What are you going to do? Right. Like, what are the big decisions ahead? And you're an offensive guy. Um, it was clear that the defensive side of the ball was the strength of this team. Uh, there's a lot of questions on offense. What do you think should be task number one for head coach and uh, Antonio Pierce? Well, you have to address the quarterback issue because in order to win in this league, you got to have a quarterback. OK, you, you have a quarterback, you have a chance. And though I don't think Aiden O'Connell or whomever the quarterback they decide is the top priority, I honestly feel, Amber and EA, they've got to get this offensive line addressed. They've got to get this offensive line fixed and consistent. You see what you can, you can see right and foremost, there's one team in the NFC that was dealing with offensive line troubles forever. When they had them addressed, look, they made a run. That's the Detroit Lions. You see where the San Francisco 49ers is. You see how they're respected offensive line with Trent Williams being the, the main cog in, in that offensive line. Offensive line is key. You're not going anywhere without a good offensive line. And so even though the defense was the strength of this team, there's still th the needs uh, th needs to be uh, uh, places addressed on the defense. So I think that's a work in progress. But first and foremost, you got to get a quarterback and you got to get that offensive line finalized and settled. Now that the head coach is all wrapped up and done, got the new GM today, Tom Telesco, comes over for the Chargers, had great, great uh, success with some of those players over there. What's your first opinions of uh, Tom Telesco? Well, you know what? It, you look off of his resume, it's look, when you uh, anointed to a job, when you get put into a job like this, general manager, yeah, you know, it goes off of your first decision on what you do, what you're pre preparing to do, either in free agency and the draft. Now, I'm not familiar with right now where the uh, Raiders sit as far as the salary cap is concerned, so I don't know how aggressive they could be in the free agent market. We'll have to wait and see. I was so bent up on this whole general manager and coach hire, I let a lot of the details slip through. But now that it's been settled, I can go back and look over my notes and finalize where we are. But as far as the free agency moves and as far as the draft, that's what you're known for as a general manager. And look, this I, I might be in a minority when I say this. But I've always believed the head coach and the general manager should have a very tight relationship. If I'm a head coach and EA is my general manager, I go up to say, hey, EA, I need a shutdown corner to play right side primarily. Who do you like? Then it's up to my general manager to get me what I need. If I go up to EA and say, EA, I need a right tackle that can run block and is fairly good at, at pass blocking, we'll, we'll be able to cover him with a tight end in the back. I need my general manager to do that. That's the type of relationship that I want between my general manager and my head coach because I need my general manager to bring me players that I can coach and excel and win with. So that would be the first thing for Tom to do is bring in some guys that can help the, this team compete and win in a very competitive division. And I love that Tom Telesco said in his press conference that he really believes this team can win. He looked yes. at the situation because he could have had uh, other opportunities, but he really believed that he could come in here and win. And uh, Hondo Carpenter asked a great question about, look, you're kind of walking into a situation that's pretty good compared to most new GMs walk into a situation where the team is pretty broken, like whether you're getting out of salary cap hell or whether, you know, it's just not a good situation. What do you 
say to the people or the thought process that this team is pretty close? Like this team, maybe one or two games won, would have put them in the playoffs this year. Well, you know, close doesn't get you the cigar, Amber, when it sounds good. I mean, it, you, you know, close is only for what? Horseshoes and, what, you know, any other <laughs> yeah. and, and type, of, type of game. So that, that doesn't do it. Look, the Raider Nation has been patient for two decades. And they are, they're itching. That's the last time we went to the Super Bowl. You know, and, and the fact is they're itching for a winning team. They're tired of, I'm tired of seeing Kansas City. I'm tired of hearing about the Chargers. I'm tired of hearing about every other team in the AFC. Why can't the Raiders compete? And so what you want to do is you want to get off to a right, a good start. First of all, you want to do a, have a strong start. The Raiders are the only team in the NFL who are going to have 10 home games this year. What are you going to do with it? It's time to make the Death Star a pivotal place on anybody's stopping point. It's time for the Raiders to take a hold of home field advantage and make it their own, just like you have at so many other stadiums around the league. So there is a there is a building process that you're working towards that you're that you would then end Amber and EA, you just want to get in the playoffs. You don't want to be close. In order to compete for a championship, you have to make the playoffs. They've added another team. There's another spot available, but you, the Raiders, have got to take it. And like I said, the AFC is not getting any softer. It's going to get stronger and more complicated and more competitive. But this division has been competitive since uh, since you know Patrick Mahomes came into Kansas City. Well, I think there is reason to be excited. It's a hopeful day yep. here at Raiders headquarters. And Lincoln, we thank you so much for coming on. Lincoln Kennedy, we can't wait to hear you back on the air again. It feels weird to not have football here. Right, we, I right. want next season to start. Yep. I'm so Who excited. Who are you telling? <laughs> Who are you telling? <laughs> well, Good you to see you, Lincoln. my thumbs. I'm at home. I need <laughs> something to do. Him and James <laughs> Jones are ready to line up That's there. Right. They told us we got a wide receiver and offensive line. Check them off. <laughs> Let's the go. All right. Thanks a lot, Lincoln. We'll catch you soon. Thanks, guys. Way to go, Lake. All right. Well, this has been an awesome day. It um, has been. I, I feel like I got to know Tom Telesco, who yep. I didn't really know. Uh, got to know AP a little bit better. And I do think there is reason for Raider Nation to be extremely hopeful. Um, and I, I, I know close only counts. <laughs> you know, horses <laughs> yes, and hands. Yeah, according like to Link. You knew, I knew Link was going to keep it real. I knew he was going to keep yeah, it real. Yeah. But I do feel like Raider Nation should be very positive with a very strong draft. Free agency, by the way, starts in just a couple of weeks. You yeah. know, we're a little over a month away from the new year coming and free agency. And I think this roster could be built into something very special. But kudos to Mark Davis for going on his instinct. And he was right. Right. I think both uh, both situations are win-win for us. Mm -hmm. Head coach, obviously, because of the the tie-in with uh, who he is as a person, uh, just uniquely qualified for for this job. And then the GM, he's just a per someone kind of outside our building, yeah. right? This is the first time we only had like four or five GMs in the history of our organization, right? So he comes in outside with great experience with. Uh, with a great roster of amazing players that he has come across. But everyone's hopeful this time in the season Yeah, when you're in the offseason. Everyone's hopeful. But I think Raider Nation is just really excited about what's oncoming because of the last – four or five weeks of our season in 2023. All right. We want to thank all of our guests that came on the show. Just yep. a reminder for all Raiders content, go to Raiders.com or the Raiders official YouTube page. We're going to see you guys for free agency yeah. and the draft coming up before you know it. That'll do it for us. For Eric Allen. Raiders. We'll see you soon. Raiders. Isn't that a pretty sight? Sideline. We told the state of Nevada Touchdown! that you're getting more than a football team. The highest point total in Raiders franchise history. You're getting an army. You got to stay involved no matter what it is. We have a commitment to this community. And working in the community is the thing that we do the best. One night, one cause, one nation. Be there as we put the helmets down and our hands out in support of Nevada. Introducing the inaugural Las Vegas Raiders Foundation Silver and Black Gala. Featuring players, coaches, alumni, and entertainment. Join us in providing help and hope to those struggling with mental health issues. Secure your spot today.